Here is your podcast. You know, I've been doing this show nine years. In the beginning, it was great. I got to show up and just talk and leave. That was fantastic. But now Mech sends me this theme song, tells me to put my own voice in it. Lily shows up. She doesn't produce a goddamn thing. All she does is laugh, turn around, and go home. The only thing I don't wind up doing for this show is listen to it. That's your fucking job. Hey, what's happening, Mike Schmidt, 40-year-old boy podcast? Do I sound different? Do I sound weird? I'm in a different chair. Does that do anything for you? I don't know if my ass comfort does anything for my voice for you guys. I don't know if it changes it up. Uh, here we are. You know where I am? Guess where I am? I'm in Chicago. In a, I'm in a room with a sump pump. And, uh, and that's what I call Dave, sump pump. Hi, Dave. Hello. See, normally Dave sits there and he thinks to himself, I'm going to jump in here and talk, but not until Mike's done talking. And I think we did one show where I talked for like six minutes and he never got to talk. And it's funny, when I do Never Not Funny, I always bust their balls because uh, when you do Never Not Funny, they now apparently, because the show used to be, hey, look, we're all in a room and having a good time. Now it's, hey, all of the people from Never Not Funny are having a good time. The guest may show up in the middle and interrupt our good time, and then we'll have to drag his ass into this fucking conversation, which is interesting to me, but that's the way they do it, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's the way they handle their show, and I'm not on that show any longer. I'm on it occasionally. Certainly, I'm there sometimes. I Certainly, I see Jimmy Pardo. Okay, he's not here right now, is he? What, wait a minute. He loves Chicago. Could he possibly be in your basement? No. All right. Uh, he's not manning the sump pump over there. How, you know, I gotta be honest. <laughs> if I was to think of anybody in the world who would not know how to work a sump pump, top of the list, me, yeah. but, and, and right there, one and one A, me and Pardo. The you two of us yeah. just staring at the sump pump like a fucking monkey trying to work algebra. That'd be Arms awful. Folded, yeah, oh yeah. Feet well, apart. But we both, you know, here's what we would do. We would go, well, we gotta fix that sump pump. And instead of tackling it right away, we would go buy outfits to fix the sump pump. The Gordon pull. Fisherman? Dude, oh, no, I'd look like Mario. I'd wear like a fucking Mario. <laughs> Dude, what if Jimmy and I dressed up like Mario and Luigi <laughs> to fix your goddamn sump well, pump? You're implying that I know how to fix it. I don't know how to fix it. I just know what it does, and it it's it can be very loud. So, so. I, we need to live in terror of the fact that it could break at any moment? No, I don't say that, because then, I mean, look around you. This will be underwater again, and I can't have that. Dude, speaking of underwater, I was in the airport last night. I, you know, look, I took a plane here to Chicago, folks. That's not how that things. works at yeah. the airport. Nor- normally, well, normally, again, Jimmy and I would dress up like Mario and Luigi and drive our <laughs> plumbing truck out here. Hey, that's a spicy a spump pump. Hey, that's a spicy a meatball. Go, 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 That was French at the end. Jete. All right. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm a little infected with the French because I just saw President Trump, like, try to rip the arm off the fucking French prime minister. I Again, He's a 70-year-old fat guy. Somebody just to take him out, push him, shove him down. Because, again, he's a, he treats the whole world like it's a big sandbox. So then, like, a bigger kid should just come over and trip him. Like, you know what? Get the president of fucking Tazikistan to <laughs> kneel behind him and yeah. pretend you're going to shake his hand. And then get, like, the president of Macedonia to push him over the back of the fucking guy from Tazikistan. And then he's just laying there in a the sandbox, fucking fat and 70, and he can't stand up. And then uh, they do their fucking native dance, whatever that is in Macedonia. Uh... The, the Trump dump. That's what, that's what it's called. Dude, we got a sump pump and a Dude. Trump dump. This is a great show so far. Let's dump Trump. Dude, let's dump Trump in the sump pump and then get Jimmy and fucking and Mike to put on their fucking overalls and their big mustaches and fish him the fuck out. You know what would be funnier than actually pushing him down is watching him try to get back up without oh any help. Yeah. Literally just hold Ivanka and Jared Kushner back as they try to, we've got to help our dad. No, you don't. Let's watch this fat ass try to fucking roll over. <laughs> no, it's like watching old people try to get back up is more funnier than when they fell. He so. pretends to be so tough. He's 70 and fucking chubby and he's out on the golf course with that lady ass. Oh my God, is he disgusting. Lady ass. He's just, you just see him and you're like, that guy is full of gravy. You know what I mean? <laughs> you think to yourself, there is no way, like if I poked him with a pin, I'd get shot in the eye with a chicken fried steak gravy. It would just hit me right in the fucking eye. And then he'd lick my face. Oh, I don't want to get my little face licked by Trump, and I'm not a lady. That's what he does. He licks ladies' faces. I don't know if you heard about that. <laughs> Didn't you hear about that? He was at the fucking, like, he was running the Miss Teen USA thing, and he went in the back, and he just licked everybody's face. <laughs> it's, it's grim. And then they vote for him. That's the guy I want running my country, a face licker from fucking Albany. Mike, Jesus I'm Christ. just going to give you a little word of advice. You, sh- you shouldn't really talk about politics. You don't think so? No. Why not? Because people people, <laughs> people will get mad at you. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware. There's a couple of subjects you probably should never bring up in public, and that's one of them. Okay, all right. Do you have a list of the others? So I know it's look, a pretty short list. Well, I got to be honest with you, really quickly. Mm-hmm. A, I want to thank you for bringing this list to my attention ten years into the fucking show. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you could have told me about it year yeah. one. You could have brought me, sent me a note or something. Uh, what, why? What else do you consider on the list besides politics? I, have I? Let's put it this way: Have I covered other things on the list before? 
Yes. Oh, and you think I've, I've uh, offended yes. people and sent them scurrying? Yes. All right, so politics is one. But this is all in hindsight. At the time, I thought it was funny shit, but apparently it's not. But now you've become the, as a, as a consigliere for this show, you're just yeah. telling me what I should and should not yeah. do going forward, especially entering year 10, because we're trying to attract a new audience. Here's the thing. Max and I sat down to do this show. Like I said, we're in the basement. First of all, we just spent uh, an hour and 45 minutes trying to figure out the headphones. That was fun. He's the tech guy. He's, a, he's got a fucking studio with I'm... 87 guitars, and the guy can't tell me how to record a double track on a fucking computer. I don't know. Uh, you're pro- it's something to do with the audacity thing that won't let us put multiple microphones in. Well, we, we look, we created an aggregate device. I, I thought we did. I even named it Mike and Mech's 40-year-old boy. I thought that was christened, and we were going to talk into the same microphone. Well, two microphones, but in the same computer, the same audio source. Yeah. Dudes, this fucking show is a hassle when I'm at Dave's house. Not really. I mean, it's fun to do. <laughs> but, like, here's the thing. Guess what happens after this? When we're done recording, guess what I got to do? I got to listen to this fucking show. And, the, and then make sure it records properly because he's recording it on the two different audio thing. I don't fucking know. I, I no, no, no. The bottom line is that you have to sit in one place and listen to your show to ensure the quality of the recording and yeah, possibly come up with a, a title for it. And the only reason you, you have to do that is because apparently, you know, I have to go paint something. Well, sure. When we're done. Yeah. Now, I could do both, but then we wouldn't even start the interlude until 10 o'clock tonight. Oh, what's the interlude? What's this you're talking about? This thing that you want me to do. <laughs> right, Wait well, a second. All you right. Were, you were kidding about that, were you? Well, I got to be honest. At this point now, you don't even have to fuck. You can listen to the show, too, because here's what you do. You paint me and Jimmy Pardo as Mario and fucking Luigi, and done. This show is finished. Yeah, but I, I still have to go paint it. Yeah, well, just think it. And it'll come out on the canvas, right? You, well, your I hands can... fly. Don't you? You're a quick painter guy. I could just draw it here on this pad. Yeah, I don't do that. All right. All right. We, we don't want to cheat people out of multicolor. Uh, all right, so here we are. I'm at, uh, and so we came here to figure all this shit out. I got in late last night. I flew in uh, on a plane, as I mentioned, uh, and then I, I and look. So this show, by the way, is late. We, we should talk about that. This show, I think you're getting it on Thursday night because we're recording it right now on Thursday morning. And uh, well, if I have to paint and listen to it and do all that other shit myself, yeah, it won't be till Thursday night. You'll get it as soon as you get it. But if you help me and do your share and chip in, I always do. Man, I have to. It might be up earlier. Yeah, I'm sour. I mean, I don't want to do it, but I know that I have to do it, so I'll do it because I you might sure think it's funny. The show? Yeah, when you listen to it. <laughs> Some people funny. do. I think it's funny when I'm doing it. I mean, I know that. So yeah, I mean, but I don't you think like, anything changes. But you like yourself. You'd be going, man, God, I'm I'm pretty funny. That happens occasionally. Like I said, I've been diving well, into the YouTube channel. That's and, it's and, no different. It's, it's sitting back and listening to what you just did is probably gonna make you feel happy. You know what I like is when uh, on that Facebook, Facebook on that Facebook on Facebook on the Facebook. Well, I was gonna say on that Facebook thing that on this day when they throw back. Oh yeah. And you go look at like something from seven years ago, and people quote me and like yeah. in a post, and they write things something that i wrote uh-huh. and uh and, I'm, and I, I literally and because my standard response was did i say that i'm hilarious <laughs> um which now when i read it back i go does that sound arrogant i hope it doesn't because i mean i was just well, being it, funny it's like going back and listening to like an old like if you were a musician like an old song you recorded back oh, wow that's that's kind of good even for back then what's well, funny you talk about that because I, I again i have so much i have a catalog of nonsense all right and that's fine and, and look Let's be honest, probably four fifths of it unusable. Just throw it out the fucking window. But the other fifth, gold. That's that's where I go. I'm yeah. never again, just like in real life, where I go to extremes, I'm either great or I'm fucking awful. Well, that's how the show works. It's e- it's either one fifth of the show is literally something you would put in this fucking Smithsonian, or the other four fifths is something you would put in a dumpster. Or something <laughs> you would throw into your sump pump that would clog it up and then me and Jimmy would have to come and fucking fly it the fuck out of there. Uh, but when I listen back to that stuff, because I, I, this just recently came about because of two different things. One, yeah. uh, there's a, a website called split cider and I sent this to you. They, they are doing a thing on the greatest bits of stand up comedy and they did the bit, uh, they, they basically deconstructed Pat Oswalt's black Angus bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which, uh, and remember I sent it to you and then you listen to it yes. and like, it's like, you know, it's bend over Abigail Mary, Abigail May, here comes the gravy pipe. I mean, it's just, I remember the first time I saw it and I was like gasping for laughter because yeah. it's just. It's it's, it's the equivalent of a boxer who has you in the corner and you're out and he just flurries because he's like this is it I'm putting you out. It's just it's and it's a five minute bit and I and I heard it I'm just like Jesus Christ. Now there's another bit that I didn't send to you yet, but someone else uh, a guy I follow on Twitter retweeted and he goes for my money this is the most underrated stand up bit in history. And uh, I listened I went to it and it's it's Paul F Tompkins's peanut brittle bit. <laughs> And, and well, I, here's the thing. And again, I hate spending my comedy show telling you to go listen to better comedy, but I guess I'm doing that at this point because then I, I have the album. I have Paul's first album and, uh, but I still went and listened to the bit on again in the moment. And I, I was just again, wheezing from laughter and our, our, you know, one of our friends, Tom Faust, who's a listener to this show, he actually responded on Twitter. He goes, I literally fell off my couch laughing the first time I heard this. 
And it's because it just, the, the premise is that uh, the peanut butter cans that you open and snakes jump out of them. Okay. Right. And he sees them in a store. And then literally he does this five, six minute bit. And I don't want to give it away. But you got to go listen because it's fucking genius. And, uh, and you will, it just, he, un, it takes that small premise and builds it and tears it apart and then builds it again and then tears it apart again. And, and you just go, Jesus Christ, how, how the fuck did he do that? It's, it's such a David Blaine magician type moment, even though David Blaine blows and we all know that. Uh, he does. but, but to see, yeah, he does suck. Yeah, come on, that dude. Oh yeah. The crazy. The... Yeah. He like reaches into your chest and he pulls out a fucking diamond necklace and you're like, Whoa, where the fuck did that come? And then he swallows it and he shits out a frog and you're like, wait a well, second. No, that's actually cool. I just don't like when he like wears a sweater outside and uh, for 12 hours. Yeah. That whole thing where he's I like, get... Hey, freeze me in ice. Yeah, and that I'm not up for that. Just do the hand thing whether you switch my card around and make a quarter bite in half or some shit like that <laughs> no well, here's what you got to do here's what, and again I, everybody's like ah oh, david blaine i because again the up close magic shit he made something appear in a bottle once and i have to admit that kind of stuff fascinates me lily yeah. goes she goes to the magic castle all the time the one time she brought me we went and uh we have a friend named phil van t who does like rope tricks and card tricks and shit like that and uh and I, i'm 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 still 11 years old i see that shit happen and i get waylaid by it but yeah you're right those those gigantic fucking yeah i don't get that yeah and you gets frozen in a block of ice or suspended yeah. above a fucking thing what we need to do is we need to freeze david blaine in a block of a block of ice and then leave him there <laughs> and never never get him out you know what i mean yeah. like and take away all of his means of whatever the fuck or his heat that'll melter. show him yeah no it'll show us we'll do like, like a little human zoo it would be like Roddy mcdowell in the twilight zone you just got david blaine in a fucking cage in a block of ice everybody walks by and stares at him and bounces peanuts off the fucking face of it and he opens his mouth reflexively because he wants to eat a peanut, but then he realizes he can't catch it through the block of ice, and then he realizes how fucked he really is. What were you talking about before David Blaine? I don't know. I'm don't talking about Paul it. F. Oh, that's right. Uh, peanut and the fucking peanut bread. Dude, dude, dude. Again, it's it's just astonishingly good. And so what I was saying was I have all of this catalog, like yeah. all of these hours and hours and hours of me talking, and you could boil it down to like maybe one-fifth of it would be absolutely, to me, golden, like mm -hmm. really genius stuff you'd want to repeat or bring back. Is that the sump pump? Yeah, you hear it. Luckily, there's a noise gate on our our mics. So you don't hear it too much, but yeah, it, it's kind of loud. Okay, but so, but it went. It made a weird like. <laughs> yeah, but that sounded like a banshee, like because it it started rattling chains into the microphone here. No, it's just it's a pump. It just pumps the water out of that into the backyard, so my basement doesn't flood. But getting back to what you were saying, I don't I, I don't understand the the logic of not wanting to listen to your show. It's not. It's not that I don't want to listen. I mean, I already did it. I heard it. I mean, I, I heard it when I did it. Yeah, but... But occasionally, yeah. like I said, I will go back and I hear something and I go, holy fuck, that was great. Um, I, I don't I don't know, dude. I, I guess I should. Maybe going forward, is that something I need to do in year 10 is listen every week to the goddamn show? No, I think it's too late now. <laughs> I think you're already... You're set in your ways. I, I just I just think that if, if it was me and I was putting something out for people to listen to, I would want to you know, double check and go, you know, next time I record, I'm not going to say this word so much, or next time I, I'm not going to do this, or I should work on this, or I should. Yeah, but that, all right, I hear what you're saying, but what, what you're doing then is you're basically taking away what the show is, which is just a, a stream of consciousness monologue. And if I go in and I go, well, I shouldn't do that. I got to prep this. I got to do that. We'll have me talking for 15 minutes and being out. Yeah. But then how do you know that you wouldn't make some discovery about yourself going, you know what? I'd be way more funnier if I did this blank. Wow, and fuck how, you. No, hold on, man. You think, so you're, uh, you're just killing me in the premise of the show. No. Jesus Christ. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. So, but you don't think it's good enough, so now I need to go in and listen and tighten it up, no, no, which no. is fine. I get no, that. I'm not, but... I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying how, how do you know what the show really is if you never listen to it? The show's me talking. That's it. There you go. Yeah. I talk. I know I'm talking, and that's it. I know, I know okay. how to tell a story. I know how to just fucking run downhill, and I know how to make it happen. I, I'm... I'm I'm a little weirded out right now. All right. So, well, I mean, <laughs> well, that I, didn't I, take long. Well, because you're telling me that what I've no, been I, doing I, for nine years is fucked and that I need to change it and do a completely different approach. And I guess maybe for year 10, that's what I'll do. No, but uh, no, no. I was comparing two different mindsets of maybe a musician or somebody, a uh, singer or whatever, you know. Okay. Well, then let's take that. Why, analogy. Do, you think, why do you think live albums well, very rarely go out live? They're always, there's always something that they got to go back and they got to, they'll, they'll double track. I'm just, right. But I'm not, I'm not I'm saying not a, you did anything. I'm, I'm just, I'm not a symphony. I'm the clash. You know what I mean? And, and like the clash cared and we're professional as well. I guess more, uh, or maybe I'll be naked Ray gun. I mean, I'm some, you're uh, fish. No, but, but like a punky fish. You're either grateful dead. Oh no. Fuck that dude. That's fucking, no, I'm not, well, I'm never doing this show again. Well, 
isn't that what the Grateful Dead would do? Just go up and jam and well they got yeah they noodle around and do shit well i'd rather be then, give, then make me a total jazz dude make me fucking charles mingus or whoever the fuck charles Mingus. but those guys still had a format there was a format there. yeah my format is talk to your finished their format was okay. playing till you're done again uh i'm not saying you did any of this stuff i'm just i'm just pondering the the difference between well look i need to listen i need to go back and fucking listen anyway because again so like, wait I, you I, are I agreeing to, with me to a certain extent because but not for this show i i I need to go back and listen to stuff because I got to formulate stuff for the stage. You know, if I want to bring sh- stories on stage and stuff like that, I got to listen to the beats and things like that. And then, and then add the writing element into it. Like, yeah. so what I was saying was like with Paul F, when you hear the fucking peanut brittle bit, yeah. you know, that came about from writing and also from doing it live so many times and getting responses and things like that. Yeah. That's how he hammered it into, into shape. This is not, no. what I do is not that, no. you know, what I do I is I just it. fucking talk off the top of my head and, and, you know, hopefully it's good, and uh, sometimes I guess it isn't. I don't know. Fuck. I mean, I I live with that every goddamn week. But um, but if but what my point is that if I heard like if I wrote fucking the Ang- black Angus bit, or if I wrote <laughs> the fucking the peanut brittle bit, yeah, I I I would retire. Like I mean, I, those guys, I they've had bodies of work for long periods of time, and I know me. Like if I created that fucking chunk, that fucking brilliance, yeah, I I would I would want to just put my pen down and then lay down and get and get have people throw money at me for the rest of my life it's it's a weird thing inside me that i'm trying to you know square away then you never would make your sergeant pepper if you just rested on the laurels of revolver i'm a singles guy yeah you kind of are from the era of the 45 <laughs> so i just bust out a single <laughs> or for the new era because i mean i yeah, would call this yeah, a singles era singles era itunes i'm gonna buy 99 cents or a buck 29 for just this one thing yeah nobody's putting together an album anymore yeah, and when know, they do they sad. take too long and they yeah. pretend that it's going to be this or that and then it turns out that they've got one good song and the rest of the time they were jerking off and then you know <laughs> and then they go out live and they go here's a new one and everybody goes to get some fucking popcorn so it's like you know just <laughs> here's something off our new album i gotta click. go to the bathroom I just said click as if the audience hung up on the band. <laughs> <laughs> hey, here's something of our new album. Click. So you're not mad at me then? No, I'm not mad. I understand what okay. you're saying. Because I've I'm, had enough of be, people being mad at me for a, that'll last me for a while. I'm good. Who's so, mad at you? The, apparently the internet. <laughs> Wait um, a, no, look, I, listen, I've come here from the internet. And I'm here to tell you as a duly deputized ref, uh, representative. No, I know you, yeah. You, no, the internet yeah. is not completely mad at you, but no, a section no. of the internet is mad at you. Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah, and again, it's all subject because you know you, you're an entertainer, and you know you deal with people on iTunes telling you how bad you suck, and you're this, and you're bad, and you suck. And all right, all right, hold on. Before you do that, let's let's talk about that for just a second. Okay, okay. Uh, in iTunes right now, the top three reviews bury me. Okay, yeah. um, one of them is well, someone... I wrote one of those, by the way. All right, well, I hope you didn't all write right. the one I'm thinking of. Uh, the first one is a guy uh, who is like, and again, I, I think I talked about this on the show before. It's like from four months ago. He's like, ah, oh, this fucking guy, he takes a week off, but he's never shy about asking for people for money. Um, well, I, I took a, I took one week off. I mean, it was like, you know, because I, I think I was, oh, whatever the fuck, I was sick, whatever the fuck happened. But it made me laugh because I put up, I still recorded, I think, like a half hour intro and then put up a regular show. So fuck you. I don't know who you are, but thank you for complaining. Two, the second guy was a guy who bailed because of politics. Uh, See, I told you. I don't like having our politics, his politics mentioned, and I used to love the show, and now I don't. And and I've, as I've always said, <laughs> that's your ev- problem. Dude. Eventually, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, going to say something yeah. that's going to make you go, "Oh no!" Everybody has a sense of humor till they don't. Yes, and and I found a lot of that happened with the politics in the situation yeah. in the country. Now, when I talk about it, people that were longtime listeners wrote me and were like, "Hey, dude, you know you're fucking out of line, and here's why." And mm-hmm. then I engaged those people. I wrote them back, and I said, "Well, here's my feelings on it, and that it, I'm sorry." And uh, and I'm so, not I'm sorry, yeah, but uh, never, no, one yeah. time I said, I'm the, the one guy, I said, I'm sorry you were fooled by a charlatan. That's what I said. <laughs> um, and, and so we went back and forth, whatever. <laughs> so, but, but I engaged them all very responsibly, I thought, because again, yeah. there were, and there are people who are longtime listeners who've been here forever. Yeah, and all I, of a and, sudden, yeah. Well, and those people I wanted to talk to yeah, because it's like, you man. know what I do. Like there are people on the, who've listened to the show for a really long time and then it, they disappear. Like, I, and I, I'm wondering what the moment was that I lost them, what it was where I let them go. Because there were people who used to write me every week or whatever, and now they're fucking not even my friend on Facebook. And I'm like, I, dude, I got blocked by a dude who would reply every week about the show. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I was blocked. And I'm like, what the fuck did I do to this guy? You try to do the timing. You look at the date that he left you and how that corresponded to the show and maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. that episode. But I, mean, I but it was a thing where I didn't notice until yeah, all yeah, of a sudden he came really up notice. in my my like last year's whatever the fuck on this day. Like, and his, what's he was he going up to? Yeah, he's up to hate me. But he but I had heard from him every week <laughs> yeah, up until know, that, that point. That is kind of weird. So I don't I don't fucking understand why people bail. 
But um, well, yeah, I do understand why people bail. If I say the wrong fucking thing, that's fine. But anyway, so then the third iTunes uh, review that you just mentioned, yeah. uh, dude, this dude. He wrote like, a, there were chapters. He had yeah, chapters. He wrote, a, he wrote a book about how much I suck and why. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and what was funny is he, he picked a lot of the things that I feel about myself to a certain extent. Yeah. But, but I guess he missed the, the part where I understand them and I'm trying to get, uh, whatever the fuck, who gives a flying fuck? The guy hated me. I mean, really fucking kicked me in the balls. Yeah. Um, but when you say, because what I wanted to stop you on that was, because you're like, you're on iTunes, people say they hate you and, they, and that you suck. Well, recently, yes. But if you still look at the iTunes reviews, yes, I, I yeah, you know, I we still have four and a half stars or whatever the fuck, and I still have over like you know, ten times, maybe even thirty times the amount of of good ones that I do bad ones, which is fine. But my point is, please don't say that. I guess what I'm saying is, don't say the internet tells me they hate me. I suck because it hasn't gone to that pitch just yet. Yeah, I, I was just comparing that that it's all relative, you know. I, you know, I might have angered a couple people. That doesn't mean anything. You've had people, I'm saying you've had people actually on a public forum tell, tell Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. There it's was, there was, a, there was a, there was an entire fucking page devoted to how much people hated me at one point. <laughs> See, yeah. Just people writing on and on. Time, about, yeah. just not, and they did this not. and he's always this and he's always, and he's crying and, and I'm just like, whatever the fuck, man. I, I'm just, you know what? I, maybe and, those would all go away if you listen to your show. Yeah. Again, <laughs> quit giving validation of these fucking nobodies, please. I mean, because that's another thing. That's when you say yeah. that I don't do it right. That that makes me go, I well, fuck. Are these it. assholes right? I mean, it's like I, I do what right. You're saying that I don't do the process correctly. I'm supposed to no, listen. No, I'm no, supposed to no, do no, all that no, shit. No. I didn't say you don't do it. I I was ask I was asking a question based upon my approach of uh, what's the only thing I have compared to what you do is when you record a song or you, you know you you write a song and you or you do a solo, you know, I don't think I could ever just say, I'm going to play this guitar solo, and when it's done, it's done, and I'm, the song's finished and mastered and mixed, and it's out there. I will always go back and listen to it a thousand times and go, you know what? I could do that better. Well, and, and, But I'm not, I'm not saying that's what you should do. I'm just saying that's a different opinion. That's a different approach. It's a different process. Plus, it's kind of different anyway because it's music and... A, a, compared to impromptu top right. of your head comedy. Well, you I wonder, get that they're not exactly the same. So I'm not I'm not saying you should do it this way. I just I have a hard time I have a hard time understanding the concept of just letting something be conversational humor fine. You you let it be. It's just what it is. It's organic. But you know, if I was crafting something and my name was on it, I I I don't know if I could be as uh as confident and just say, well, I I played the best track I could play. I had the liberty of going back and fixing it. I'm probably going to go back and fix it. No, yeah. That's but, why dudes like me take, you know. But I can't go 18, back and I know. fix I, a three-hour show no, after I, I've done it. I completely it. get it. I, again, I'm not giving you some critique. And And honestly, at this point, I'm confident that what I did was fucking good. So, I mean, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not putting out garbage. I mean, and believe me, I've been with Lily, and I've started a show and done eight minutes and said, I'm done. I can't do this. we got to start over. Right. I've bailed on eight minutes. I, I have... <laughs> <laughs> I have just the other day I saw I have like I have like a 35 minute show um <laughs> some, something happened once in the middle of a show and I because I had to, and I had to stop down yeah. and I had to go take a phone call and do some stuff and I came back and I did a 35 minute fucking show where I was pissed and I was raging and I was I was saying a bunch of shit I probably shouldn't have said <laughs> and then I I finished and I just went no. I, and I stopped at one point I stopped and I looked at her and I go I can't put this out and she's like no you can't and I was like all right fine how many people out there would pay money to hear uh, that? nobody wants to fucking hear that so, I think that's a pa uh, Patreon thing <laughs> I'm not kidding you man you might you might think that's not good but it's good you uh, might not think it's what people might want to hear, but I think they would. Well, you're nice to say so, but I, I, yeah, that's, uh, it's buried. So, uh, so, but that has happened before where I've, I, there's times when I've just haven't felt it or I've thought my voice sounded weird and I've just fucking stopped. Yeah. So it's not like I'm putting out garbage. I'm, 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 and I'm, but I'm confident enough after 10 years that when I'm talking and I'm doing this, because again, you want to compare songs to stand up. You're right. You yeah. can't just fucking sloppily go ahead and just go, ah, ha, ha, anyway, another thing you have to be meticulous. Like I said, stand up is a fucking is a is yeah. a is a saber okay stand up is a is a a dagger whereas this is a propeller you know what i mean it's just yeah. a bunch of blades whirling around and whoever walks in gets fucking cut but yes it's, it's more based on conversational humor and things that just fly out of your mouth which is awesome 
I well, think. I hope so. I mean, I, I don't know. You know, I I, I like to think yeah. it, I you know I've I've been doing this long enough. And somebody, I all right. So I flew yesterday, so I'm in the airport. And every time now I fly with my microphone, I get fucking flagged. Even though I'm TSA pre, they fucking see it. And the way I always pull my bag and I go fuck. And I literally just look right at them and I go, it's a microphone. Well, you know, sir, we're gonna have to wait and go ahead and go through your bag. And and then the funniest thing is they they do the fucking swab thing. They they have some weird. They put gloves on and then they have to swab my microphone to see if there's any weird material on it i'm like what could what do you think i have fucking uranium well, in my microphone what the fuck are you it's doing cylindrical it looks like a wiener if i can because you put a sock you put a hain sock over it well, here, yeah. here all this time i thought you were a top shelf professional it turns out you got a a, a hanes black anklet sock over your microphone you you are aware i record this in a stripper's house you are yeah, really, but, right i mean come on get the pop filter get the the windscreen that slides over the top we have a very nice person uh, who listens to the show our friend ellen and ellen donated to the show did she give you a windscreen uh no but she donated to the show and she's like uh, she and the best part is she goes she gave here socks uh no oh. she said here she don't need money and she oh. said but she also gave me some suggestions on how to use that money which is interesting <laughs> And uh, the bias bias windscreen. She told me to buy a, a a recording desk table at Lily's house. Yeah. And uh, and I, I it's a good idea. And then she said, what, and she goes, I don't mean to be telling you, but you should do this because it's a better thing to record on. You won't be so upset. Yeah. She goes, but also, please don't use it to buy candy. You're doing really good. <laughs> you're, you're doing a really good job of not eating candy and stuff. And by the way, people have asked. I'm now I'm down down 18 pounds in like three weeks, which is good. Um, from lifting and running and, and everything else and changing the way I eat. But uh, but but it made me laugh because, because first of all, if you went into Lily's house, yeah. like like I, I can barely bring my laptop over there without her going, ah, that doesn't go there. That doesn't go there. You think I'm going to build a fucking desk and leave it in her fucking house? It's not going to happen. Wow. I mean, you can barely move in her goddamn house. It says you walk in and there's just a pile of tits and boas all over the fucking place. And, and you know, oh, oh, I'm going to dive into the rhinestone pit and try to find something. Is that okay? <laughs> Literally, it's like a Chuck E. Cheese playroom, but with a bunch of fucking adult toys. Remember, I did a fucking show year two. I, I was I stepped on a Hitachi magic wand in her fucking room. <laughs> so believe me, the last fucking thing I can do is bring a semblance of, of reality there and build a fucking desk. Uh, but yeah, so I but it was nice that Ellen yeah. recommended that. But I it made me laugh because even if I because like I said, even if I said to Lily, hey Lily, what if I bought a desk for? She'd just be like, no, fuck it, look around this joint. Do you have do I have room for anything? No, uh, it's bad enough you want to use my spoons when you're here. <laughs> um, which is a completely different story. Please right. add, don't ask why I use the spoons. All right. So, I don't, yeah. um, so I, uh, I, I don't even know where the fuck that went, but, but anyway, so Ellen was nice enough to donate and she, Oh, uh, the money, but you tell me to listen. No, again, I didn't tell you to do anything. I, you, yeah. Sounds like you're telling me to listen. Uh, okay. well, no, you're right. I understand. I know what you're saying. So, I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I was man. getting back to the, the the process of doing the show today because we're under a time constraint. Wait a minute. The TSA guy. So I flew with my fucking oh, microphone, right. and uh, this dude uh, comes over to me, and I go, it's a microphone, and he goes, oh, a microphone, and he opens it up, and he goes, oh, are you a singer? And I said, no, do you know what podcasts are? Because you always have to have that Say conversation. Say you're a broadcaster. <laughs> well, I, I, if he's young enough, I'll yeah. go, do you know what podcasts are? Yeah. And he goes, yeah. Oh, my gosh, you're a podcaster? And I go, and he goes, he goes I just started mine. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it was John from TSA. It was very nice. He's probably got a good show. And, uh, he well, probably listens to his show. I, you know, I, uh, he didn't give me the official. Uh, no, I think he, his show's called The Mean. I think, or The Mean Show. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't, we didn't really a talk. A mean TSA guy? No, it's it's called Mean as in regressing to the average. Like the, you know, the average, you know, the mean, like a mean, uh -huh. a median account number, whatever. A fuck. median. Well, yeah, like that, but it's called but The mean, mean, regressing to the mean. So, uh, and he talks about like ordinary people doing extraordinary things, I think was the way he termed it. I don't uh, know, and if not, awful. I just wrote a tagline for I him. Don't care. I, I don't want to listen to that. Well, I, okay, well then J we're split here. Siskel yeah. says, don't listen. Ebert says, maybe give it a shot. Wait, but I would buy me, run it, that title by me again? I think it's called The Mean. I, what I was your tagline? Look, ordinary people doing? Extraordinary things. But I don't know. I fucking don't remember because we spent yeah. most of the time talking about me. Because he asked really? me, well, well, that was his fault. Okay. He asked me, he's like, what do you do? Where's the show? Yeah. What's your name? And I go, well, you can Google me and find me on the website and listen if you want. <laughs> I'm still going to stick this wand up your hiney. Uh, he, luckily, he did not have to throw <laughs> me in any way. But he was, in the meantime, he's just, uh, but see, this is the way I do it. Yeah. I actually, I distract them with my podcasting talk. Yes. So they don't understand that I have uh, tons of meth stuffed into my microphone. Exactly. They don't, they don't screw it yeah. apart and look at it. Uh, so he was very nice and he, he did all that. And he told me about that. He said, he's going to listen to this show. And I said, I, and again, I did what I always do. Please don't listen. You will hate it. I said, it, it is just, it is just me shouting and swearing quite a bit. I think you have to do that differently. Cause you should, Lily's told you this many times. You can't, 
I don't really tell them. Not, I'm, I'm exaggerating. Yeah. I don't really say, please but I, don't I'm, listen. I think it's funnier if you just ask them, do you, do you like swear words? <laughs> and they go, <laughs> yeah. shit, yeah, I do. <laughs> well, shit. fuck yeah. You ought to You're going to love me. Uh, so, cause he even said, he goes, what is it? Who's on your show? And I said, it's just me. And I'm just talking. And, and that's the thing is everybody kind of does this. They, this kind of double take when you tell them it's just you because most podcasts are five white guys around a card table <laughs> talking about Hong Kong <laughs> fooey you know I mean? and the Lakers. Remember cereal? Oh God, I loved it. It was so crunchy and crispy and flavory and fruity. I love tricks, but tricks are for kids. Remember when we were a kid? Oh my God, it was Wasn't great. great. We didn't have cell phones back then. No, you know my that? God, no. And cartoons were the best. And I could run around after school with the wind in my face and not realize I was going to grow up to be a failure with four of you motherfuckers around a card table. <laughs> I was so great. Who likes food? Everybody likes food, right? I like food. Oh my God, why is there no blue food? I think it's a George Carlin, but I love George Carlin. He died. Anyway, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> Isn't everything great? Except for ladies. Don't you hate ladies? Oh my God, ladies, they bleed out of themselves. And oh my God, it's terrible. It's so frustrating. None of them will go out with me. That's why I have a podcast with you four motherfuckers. But I love you guys. This is great. <laughs> this basement is so comfortable and it doesn't smell like four ball sacks at all. What if that's the TSA guy show? By the way, we're in a basement. Yeah, I, I know. I, I, I hate to break it to you. <laughs> terrible. Yeah. Uh, what if that is the TSA guy show? Then good for John. You know what I mean? Uh, regressing, then then you're truly regressing. You're recording by an by my old drawing table. Yes. Filled with my uh, son's uh, airsoft rifle collection. So, I mean, we're, you know. Dude, there's a sump pump. A, a stones yeah. throw away. I yeah. mean, fuck. Um, but there's also a really kick-ass percussion section. Well, yeah, there's congas. And, uh, and well, are those all congas? You got your, this is Val's Beat Laboratory. He's got uh, the congas, and then he's got bongos on a stand above the congas, and then he's got this big-ass djembe, or djembe, I don't know how you say it, that African drum right there. And what, what do you, do you play it with your hands? Yes. Okay. You should get him those fucking, uh, that jerk chicken instrument. What the fuck is that thing? <laughs> I don't know what you mean. <laughs> it's, the, it's the thing they play in Jamaica with the sticks. It's like a metal pan, and it's like got all sorts of drum. Things. Yeah, 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 that thing. Steel drum, yeah. Dude, those things rock. I always see some dude with like dreads down to his balls just playing that <laughs> shit out of that thing. And I'm like, God damn, that is cool as hell. How much does that guy get laid? Literally. Jamaican drum guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jamaican drum guy is just there. Like I said, dreads down past his balls. He's, he could use one hand to just play chopsticks. Ding, 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 ding. And use his other hand to make a lasso out of his cock and just grab a chick on the beach. And she would just, you know what he could do? He could just flop his cock out and a girl would just like, like a bow constrictor, just put the head of it in her mouth and then just suck it all the way up to his body because he's playing that fucking drum. <laughs> She just fucking slurp it up because that's the magic, man. You got to play that goddamn drum and immediately women just drop to their knees. See what you're missing, John? You want to get head? You want to get head? Just go ahead and play a steel drum. That's it. Oh, Girls will fucking really? just walk up. Yeah, dude. You mean I... Uh, all right. I, I wasted my whole career. If I had just played the steel drum instead of all them guitars. Yeah, I, I have to think that your wife would probably be disappointed if you were playing the steel drum. I mean, you have been bit. married for 30 years. A little so. bit. All right, so if you went, I don't know if you wasted yeah. your career. Hey, I just like, decided I'm going to start getting chicks. But it's not too late for my godson. That's my point. He's very early in his experience. So, and but although I got to be honest with you, he starts playing that steel drum down here, it'll just reverberate through here. You'll just have fucking suburban housewives coming in and taking him down. Yeah, he's got potential. Yeah, he's got tons of potentials. But then you get him a steel drum and forget about it. He's going to yeah. knock some fucking lady up here on the block or a keytar. Oh, see, you're wrong. See, keytars <laughs> are so ridiculous. I mean, get him a guitar, certainly, no. but it's not going to get him laid. No, I know. No, but, but but the steel drum absolutely is going to get the just fucking weird bing, suburban bing, moms bing, will hit their knees. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, I'm on. I'm on board. I think you got to do it. So, so John, if you're out there, if you decided to give this thing a fucking spin, first of all, the the uh, the other dude's never on because I told him in the fucking I told him in the airport, I'm like, I do the show by myself. Now here I am talking to you the entire yeah. fucking time. Um, but because of it, there's a special circumstance where I had to come here and I'm in Chicago and I could have done this show by myself. Certainly, but there's no fun in that. I had to come down here and talk to my friend who hates Jesus. Um, so, uh, so that's why I bring him on. <laughs> um, is that what you were talking about when you were talking about being upset and making well, the internet? Yeah, so I, I, I've never been. I've, I've never really had anybody like be mean to me. I actually, I had somebody be mean to me on Facebook before. I, I think the word wetback was used in a in a on a post. I remember that. Yeah. But that, but that, that would get, but that would get back to your number one rule of don't talk about politics. Cause that's when yeah, that came up. That, that came up and, and, and it was kind of, fu I wasn't mad or anything. It was actually funny, but I asked a question on uh, Facebook and a lot of people thought I was just being snarky and a dick, but I was, I was really asking the question. Yes. And the question was right after um, this thing that happened in, at the Adriana, what's your name? Grande. Adriana DeRuz. Listener no. of this show, <laughs> did she have a terrible incident happen in her yeah. house? 
I hope not. That thing in England with the bomb and the guy and the thing at the concert. Um, at Manchester? Was it Manchester? No, I'm not familiar. doesn't no? ring a bell. Uh, maybe. No. I, I don't know. Um, I might have been listening to fake news. Are you talking about the thing with uh, Selena Gomez at Reykjavik, uh, Iceland? <laughs> what did she do? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> it's not the same thing. <laughs> teen person in faraway location. Did it's somebody like a, blow somebody up at her like a, concert? It's a Mad Libs yeah. of teen stars. <laughs> Demi Lo- Somebody wrecked a Demi Lovato concert? <laughs> Disco. A Danny Terrio. Uh, you mean when Taylor Swift was on stage in Dublin and... <laughs> Somebody lit off a bottle rocket? Yeah, I remember yeah, that. It was awful. Uh, I was driving. You know, I was in the car uh, driving, and we'll get to that a little later in the show here. But I was, I was driving on Monday when all that happened. Yeah. It was Monday, correct? I, I don't even know anymore. I, I was in the car I, when it fucking happened. I kept happened. seeing the, the, the memes that come up every time. Pray for Manchester. Pray for Paris. Pray for yes. Nice. Pray for Brussels. Pray, and I, I, I just, I, I honestly was uh, intrigued by that concept. I wasn't mad at it. I wasn't baiting anybody. I just said, "Well, hold on. Let's unpack you for just a second. How would you classify yourself religiously?" Me myself? Yes. I'm anti-religion. Anti-religion, but do you, does that mean agnostic? Does that mean it, uh, well, what, are, what are we looking actually, at? Here? We're talking Atheist? about well, you what got me you? to talk about it. And now everybody's gonna hate me again. Well, that's your fucking fault. You can't hide behind anonymity of the fucking internet and Facebook too many times. You're, you wanted to be on this fucking thing, so we're gonna talk. I, so I wanted to be on what thing? This fucking show. I did. Yeah, I was gonna do it alone at my house, and you go, dude, just fly here. We'll do it on Wednesday and just delay it and no, put it on Thursday. We, you originally wanted me to. You said we would do the show together, and then when your your trip got delayed, and you'll get to that. I said, there's still no Right, you said we'll no do it Thursday and put it up on still, Thursday. Yeah, so I wasn't... You know. Yes, because you insisted I'm on I'm not Lucy. You demanded... I'm not trying to get on the show. Yes, I'm, you yeah. are. Baba Lu! <laughs> so, <laughs> my personal opinion is that I... I well, I, okay, I, go I, ahead. Explain I, you. I am not an atheist. And then people are always saying, you atheists don't... I go, no, 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 no. I'm not an atheist. I'd be more in the agnostic. But the one thing I am is, is anti-theist. I don't... I'm an anti-theist. I don't like organized religion. I think it's pointless. I agree with that. Now, let me stop you for a second, right. because atheist means I don't believe in anything. Atheist, an atheist says there is no God. Right. An agnostic says there's not enough evidence to prove to me that there is a God, but I really don't know, and I'm not sure. I'm comfortable in not knowing. What does an agliolioastic think? That's when you put a person outside and you cover them with olive oil. And garlic. And garlic. All right, and Parmesan I'm, cheese. I may be that. You smell like an aglioleo gostic. Yes, you are. You are the Antichrist. There's no. That's not even. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you look, go read iTunes, it'll tell you I am. Fuck. <laughs> so, unfortunately, because I refuse to just say I know for sure. Period. Either one way or the other. I ask questions a lot. I'm like, you know, I, I was wondering about you know this or this. What do you think about this? So I asked the question. What's so would you clarify? Would you count yourself as in search of answers? Because because this gets to what you've posted now. In search of answers. No, not necessarily in search of answers. I like to hear how people, people that I know, people that I'm friends with, how how they think. I like the process of how they, what they do with these same facts that I've seen. We both look at the same facts, and some people feel one way about it, and another person feels another way about it. It's the same facts; they don't change. It's a person's viewpoint. And I find that kind of fascinating. I like the discussion. I so don't like fighting. I don't like arguing. I like the discourse. The exploration. Yeah. So you're interested in a conversation with people to find out why they think the way they think and why they think differently from yes. the way you think. And unfortunately... What, what, and, and how does that inform you? What, what do you wish to gain from that? You know... More... Because look, you more, know you're a smart guy. You I know... Am? I think you are. By asking those sites of questions, yeah. you know your your poking a scab you, you See, know that and that's the, that's i i really wish that that wasn't the case because i don't to this day don't i don't understand why that's a off limits i just don't understand it doesn't make any sense to me religion you mean the topic of religion or even questioning or taking uh an issue with a part of a religion if you say to some say you say you might have a problem with the catholic church or or the Jewish faith, and you know somebody that belongs to that faith, and you might say, hey, you know, how come they do this? And what do you think about that? And they get defensive. They just automatically get defensive. And I don't think that's, I don't think that's a really good way to be as a human being, to just 
pre-program yourself to get offended because all I'm doing is asking a question. It's, it's, it's not like I'm saying, I want, I'm going to bait you into an argument by starting this conversation. And that's the thing I hate the most is the accusation that the only reason I'm asking you a question is so I can bombard you with all my knowledge. Because to be honest with you, that's what atheists, real militant atheists do all the time. They'll, they'll set you, they want to set you up just so they can bombard you Spring with facts and, and tell you, you know, about science and all. Great. You know, yeah, you, you made somebody feel bad. Good for you. But let me ask you, don't you think that this is a byproduct? Like I, as, have you felt like this your whole life? No, it's a, it's a slow, it's a slow evolution. So when you were a kid, what were you? Um, I was little. Besides that, okay, I had as a far big, as Jesus. I had a big afro. Okay. I remember that. <laughs> I, had, I had a Jimi Hendrix afro. We were uh, baptized Catholic. My mom, my dad could have cared less, I think. My mom wanted us to be Catholic. So you and I have, share that uh, same thing where we had to go to catechism. CCD, right. it was called CCD. Yes, sir. Um, now, I don't know any kid that wants to go to Sunday school. Usually it's just like a, a drag. Yeah, it's a chore. It sucks. But mine was a lot different. Mine was more like, I don't get this. This doesn't make any sense to me. But. I think I'm supposed to be doing this because I was told that this is a good thing. You know what I mean? Right. Well, so well, as I got older, I started seeing more and more and more holes. Now, again, when you're a kid, you're only, you only know your immediate surroundings. You only know. When I was a kid, I only knew Catholicism. And I, I thought Catholicism was, the church, was everything, was faith. Everybody believed the same thing or supposed to believe the same thing. As I got older, I realized, you know, there, there are different faiths. There are different uh, you know, religions and things. Not everybody's Catholic. So I started with a, a, a disdain, I guess, that grew over years for the Catholic Church. So I started to, to wander away from it. And it took a long time. Now, you, So you had a disdain for the Catholic Church, but did you have a disdain for the Jewish faith and the Muslim no, faith I didn't and know Christians any, I, and Lutherans and everybody no, else? No, I didn't know anything about them because when you're a kid, you're, you, your world is very condensed and small. You only know what's around you. I see, because it sounded like as you got older and found that there were other religions, you drifted away from Catholicism. And I'm wondering if it was because you heard of those other things, you wanted to figure out what they were about. Yeah, I've done that too. I, I did see. that too. Now, my wife is Lutheran. Um, when we got married, I told her I have no desire to get married in the Catholic Church. So let's say we, I got married in 93. So I was, what, 27. By that point, I, I was done with the Catholic Church, wanted nothing to do with it. Yeah. I, I actually was very anti, still kind of am, still am, but at that point, I was just like, this is ridiculous for me. And I said, all right, Lutheranism is like cat, Lu Lutheran is like Catholic light. Okay. So I says, we'll get married in a church and we got married. I, if I'm correct, Lutheran is when uh, you actually, your service is performed by Luther Vandross. Uh, oh, oh, I thought it was the villain from 48 Hours. All right. Um... Luther! <laughs> Luther! <laughs> Did that hurt? That looked like it hurt. You never met no Martin Luther the King. <laughs> so, okay, so Lutheran is different, and you were okay yes. with it. I was like, as long as it's not Catholicism, I'm, I'm fine with it. Let's, yeah. Plus, let me, all right, let me ask you this. What if Kristen, yeah. your wife, your lovely wife, my friend of many, many years, yeah. whose, whose house I once watched uh, uh, a fight in. Uh, in whose, front of. Whose house, yeah, in front of. Uh, the disciples went at it in a, a house where I saw uh, Van Halen's jump video premiere. And the Thriller video, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the house where I actually borrowed the tape of Synchronicity and took it home and listened to it and then forgot to give it back to her. So Chris and That's I been, who has that. <laughs> we've been friends for quite a long you time. You bastard. <laughs> so, uh, so if she had said, Yeah. It is very important to me to be married in a Catholic church. What would you have done? I would have said, nope. And you would have, it would have been, we would have worked ending. it. We would have worked it out, which I understand because but, you have an understanding, but what if, she, what if it was a deal breaker? What if her family, you know, and not even so yeah, much yeah. for Kristen, her, her mom and dad and her family, I get that. They'd always wanted it. They, yeah, but yeah. they wanted this big giant stained glass window it. and yeah. a fucking kid toucher telling them, you know, <laughs> take hands and, and be happy. See, that was their whole when deal. When you say kid toucher, that's what people <laughs> check out. Well, it's a comedy show. I thought I'd bring some in after the last 20 uh, minutes. Uh, yeah. I don't know. You went on Barbara Waller's on me and <laughs> it, that's, I didn't do that. This. Well, that's interesting to me. I want to know if because and I'm more than happy to tell you. I just don't know if there's any comedic value to this. But it doesn't have to be comedic. Yeah. 
Again, like you said, we're, it doesn't? We're, you told me we're doing a whole new thing now. Oh, okay, yeah. You, know you are going to have to listen to I was this. just saying, you know who I don't envy? <laughs> me having to listen to this bullshit. Why bad. did I ask all those stupid freaking questions? It's bad enough people have to listen. No, I got to fucking listen. Ew. Uh, all right, so, but if she insisted on it, if it was a deal breaker, she's like, I have See, to be there. That's a weird, that's a weird intangible because that's one of the reasons we're together. Because she's very... She wouldn't have done that. See, I, I know it's like, what if? I get the what if game, but... She, well, you're you're right because I will yeah. say this. Kristen loved you, and also matter. She's we, also really easygoing. She's we not, agreed. Yes, we agree. See, that's the other thing. People, she stays out of all this nonsense, but she she feels the way I do. Really? Yeah. It's not like we're fighting amongst each other. The kids need God. No, they don't. Shut up. I get hit with a pan. No, she she's on board. So it, so we got married in Lutheran church, and then the kids were born, and it's like you're supposed to get them baptized because if you don't get them baptized and by some horrific turn of events, your your baby, and this has happened to people forever, where your baby passes away before they're... I have the, to go back to this question. Do you think that Kristen agrees with you only because she's worried that you won't be able to take care of yourself in hell? Oh, I'll, I can take... <laughs> she insists on being with you. That's the, one place I know, that's the one place I know I'd be all right. <laughs> All right. Because it'll be it'll be awesome. <laughs> All the cool stuffs down there. I got news for you. All right, all right. So please continue. I apologize. So when the kids were born, we baptized them Lutheran, because at that point in our little evolution, we were like, well, you know, they gotta have some some base to work from. So let's at least give them something. To, and and at the time, I was I was indifferent. I wasn't opinionated. I didn't say no way, no church for any of them. And I was at uh, that baptism. Of, yes, of you baptism. are. And here's the funny thing. You're Val's godfather. Yes. Now, people could say, well, what a, that's kind of a hypocritical thing. You don't believe in all this stuff, but yet your kid has a godfather. Well, when I was growing up in, in, the, in the Hispanic community, Latinos, whatever, and especially in Italians, Italians and Mexicans, that relationship is beyond, in my opinion, the way I was raised, is beyond any religious connotation. Most people call them sponsors now, and what it is, it's like your your best friend is your son's godfather. He's kind of supposed to take over his religious education if for some reason you can't. That's what it means in terms of the church. It's somebody that's going to help you and support you as as you grow in that faith. I don't. That doesn't apply to me. I, that's not why I asked you. Well, to I do hope that. not. I know. I'm woefully failing at that because you're awful at that kind of stuff. <laughs> so bad. Yeah. <laughs> as bad as I am at this show yeah. that you told me earlier. Yeah. Yeah, because that's exactly what happened. <laughs> but my opinion was, in, in growing up, it's like your your godparents, or at least your godfather, your godfather was your special guy. He's the guy you call when you can't get a hold of your dad and you're in jail and you need somebody to bail you out. Right. He's the guy that can, can get you a weapon if need be. Yes. He's the guy that will cook you some spaghetti and teach you how to shoot. Yeah. That's the relationship that I had with mine. And that's what I wanted for the kids. It had not, no religious connotation to it whatsoever. So it's, it's an evolution. So now the kids are older. We never, well, they never did their first confession. They never did their communion. They never did confirmation. We, I, I got to stop you right yeah. there. I actually took Val to all of those. I know. He called me because he couldn't yeah. get a hold of you. <laughs> hey, could somebody drive me to my confirmation? <laughs> <laughs> and we actually did communion at my house. <laughs> you said cook spaghetti. I just made him some wafers. I said, bing, throw a little fucking Here's some wine, marinara kid. on there. Here's some wine. <laughs> Not that bad. Now let's go learn how to shoot. <laughs> I can't get a ride to my first confession. I'm in. I'll take it. Come on. I can listen to Just give it to me in the car. Just we'll, tell me what you did. We'll drive around the block and tell me what the fuck is up. <laughs> What's so bad? <laughs> What's so bad? So now I, I consider our home secular, which is void of... But here's the other thing. Kristen and I have never told them this is what we believe. Never said that to them. I, I don't like that. Let I don't them like, choose their own way. Yes. Choose I their don't own like path. the automatic indoctrination of a faith just because your parents were that. Right. I get why it's done. I understand why it's done, but I don't agree with it. And I'm like, you view the world the way you want to view the world. And if you decide when you're 20, 18, 19, 20, that you want to be a Muslim or a Jew, go ahead. Because I know that it's a, it's a conscious decision on your part and you feel strongly about it. And there's a lot of people that do convert to a religion or even join a religion later in life based on, you know, just seeing the world and right. And you're, you're, you're a very good dad. You're a stay at home dad, you, you know, and, and are very active in your children's lives. So again, extent, yeah. again, what if, what, what if, if, what if, um, what if either of the kids yeah. went, went full bore fucking 
uh, monk school. I love Jesus and I want to tell you about it. And, you know, and they, they embraced religion in such a way that it became a really large part of their life. And they wanted you to be educated into well, that, 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 yeah, that last part is not good. They can do whatever they want. Just leave me out of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you want to be a monk, go be a monk, but you know, don't expect me to be a monk. But dad, it's important you be a monk with me. See, that's the thing. That's the other thing about the religious on occasion. Some, I hate to generalize because I've been accused of generalizing. Just this week. Yeah. It's, 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 religion makes somebody happy, but they don't seem to be really happy until they make you happy. They're not just happy within themselves. They're, they have to make you happy. Well, I think they're taught that. I mean, that's always that, my I beef. Know, and my beef with religion too. Me. Like I've always felt that, you know, do what the fuck you want. I don't care. Yeah. Just don't tell me what I have to do. Yeah, exactly. That's, you know, if you want to take even a, the, the hot button of all hot buttons, abortion. Uh, you know, the oh, Catholics dude. are against it and everybody else is against it. You hear it. people hanging up right now. You know, people say they're against it or we're against it and all that sort of thing. And that's fine. I get it. You're against it. Totally cool. Guess what? Here's another thing. I don't like it either. I don't. Uh, but at the same time, not my fucking decision. I'm, I got yeah. I got no reason to be involved. I don't have a vagina. You don't? Uh, I, I haven't. I have not left anything inside of a vagina that may lead to me being involved in this sort of fucking discussion. So if a lady has to do something with her body, lady. I don't get to tell her what to fucking do, and neither do you. Just because you got a comic book that says you fucking do. So here's the thing: if you want to be that way and you want to live your life according to the code or whatever your book or your religion says, that's great. Yeah. But what I hate is when they start coming in and going, "Yeah, but you need to do this too." Well, no, no, I don't. I don't have to fucking yeah. do that at all. And I don't know what their their end goal is in that. They have a whole bunch of groupthink of well, people well, who feel the way they do because they think they're right. doing, they think they're Jesus's soldiers or whatever the fuck, and they're coming in and making you do the thing that, that you're supposed to do according to their book. The thing I never understood about the logic of being so militant uh, if you're, if you're uh, anti-abortion is that you somehow think that you can do, you sh it's your job to do something in God's yes. name. Well, if God is God however you think he is or whatever you think he is, he, he can handle his stuff. He can take care of his own business. He'll, yeah. he'll deal with that person. If there is anything to be dealt with at some point. And it's if that, if that baby's important enough, Jesus will throw a lightning bolt down and fuck up the vacuum before the doctor puts it inside <laughs> oh, God, her. Dude. Seriously. That's not how they do that. That's exactly how he does. No, it. they don't. No, Jesus is frozen in a block of ice. Right. And then he goes ahead and calls forth the lightning and it blasts. <laughs> You're off. thinking of Thor. Oh, my fault. I apologize. Also a God though. I'm not, I'm not that God. wrong. I've actually seen Thor though. That's the thing. You see a Norse God? A Norse. Norse. Oh, okay. These God. Mike, like Mike Norris. No, we Mike Norris kind of was a God, oh, but he in was a different way. The greatest. Uh, the, he ate a book. Remember we talked about that <laughs> once before. That was the thing I heard once before. That he ate a book. Like, what? Jesus never ate a book. <laughs> no, he, he supposedly wrote a book. Nah, that was his dad. Yeah. All right. So you were saying about people being militant about religion. And that's when I jumped in to say, yeah, that I also yeah. don't understand it. Just live your life and be cool. That should, that should yeah, just you're be asking it. me if the kids, if they turned out to be monks or is, you know, just, Muslims, just whatever, man. Just live the life of Snoopy. Just Joe Cool it, man. Just be cool, throw on your sunglasses and sleep on the top of your house and then be, oh, I'd be happy. So what happened is I posted this question. I, I couldn't understand the logic of pr what, what are we praying for? When we say pray for 9-11 or pray for whatever. What are we praying for? And some of my friends who are cool and are intelligent wrote back, well, you know, I, I feel like we're praying for uh, the survivors to be able to, you know, great, right? That's cool. I, I understand what you're saying. I might not agree with it, but I'm not going to trash you for saying it. I, I even, I type, I, that's great, you know? Um, but then somebody would post something like, uh, well, you know, that we pray that this won't happen anymore, or, you know? And I, and then I brought up the point, well, you know, take something like, what was the school shooting, the famous school shooting? Sandy, Sandy Hook. That happened, right? All those parents were terrified, rushing to school, and I imagine a lot of them were praying, please don't let this be my kid that right. got hurt. And I'm like, that's a valid thing. That's, Of course you would do that. Well, then you're saying that God decided, well, I'll listen to you, and I'll listen to you, but no, I'm not going to listen to you. Your kid's dead. I know that's a, that's a weird militant position to take, but it is something. It's, no, I don't, I don't think that's militant. I think that's logical to yes. you to someone who doesn't have faith because faith to some people is very very self-centered 
but it, it masks itself in, in modesty. Oh, I'm, I'm a Christian person. I have Christian family values. No, no, not if you're praying for your kid to make the soccer team. If you're praying for your kid to make the soccer team. Somehow you think in this gigantic universe that the deity that controls everything gives a royal shit about whether or not your kid makes the soccer team or not. Yeah. I find that completely self-centered. You know, when you look at big picture things like, well, if your kid made the soccer team because you prayed that he made the soccer team, but all these kids in Africa are dying of starvation who might have been praying for food or rain. You're saying that God said, well, I'll get, your kid will make the team. I, I'm not going to worry about these other people. See, but you know what those motherfuckers need to do? Get with God. Pray for a soccer ball. Because <laughs> then I'll tell you what, you form a team, you earn some money. See, you, you, it's you not as easy world. as getting them a soccer ball because they don't have proper footwear. Half of them are walking around in dress shoes and sweats. Well, I got news for you. If you pray for a soccer ball and it shows up, you immediately look at each other and go, we got to pray for shoes. <laughs> for God damn This pants. is fucking working. Let's God's a vending cleats. machine. Let's make this happen. Mm. I used to pray. I used to pray every night. And I used to pray. I mean, this is a long time ago, but I would pray for everybody individually by name. You were in there and yeah. other people were in there. And then I would pray for my favorite sports teams and hope yeah. that they did well. You know, just that silliness. Yeah. And, uh, and then eventually it made me go, what are you doing? <laughs> why, know, why are you, this it's is like, ridiculousness. And it, it is in a way like, you know, and, and I'd see like Tim Tebow would point, I'm like, what, what? are you telling me God gives a shit about a football game? I don't know. And here's another thing I always kind of find funny to me. It's funny. People say it all the time. They probably don't even think about what they're saying when they're saying it. God bless the United States. Yes. So. So basically, we're saying that God recognizes man-made orders around land masses and right. says, well, look, this blessing can only go here. If you live in Vancouver, you're pretty much, you're missing out mm -hmm. on this because we're skipping that part. We're going up to Alaska because that's part of the U.S. Yeah, anybody in Malta, you are fucked. Yeah, you're just, you're not, sorry. How does he feel about Guam? <laughs> <laughs> So does, does God sort of bless Puerto Rico? I mean, I, I don't know how that works. It depends on the wind's blowing. How about D.C.? I mean, I guess that's part of us, but it's not a state, know, really. I just, it, it, it I makes know, me I, laugh. It's it, foolishness. It's just but silliness. It, it makes me laugh, but it doesn't make me hate a bunch of people for thinking that. Right. I just think it's funny. But it is, but it is frustrating because, again, in our current political climate, yeah. when people are saying, uh, we don't want any refugees, we don't want any refugees, yeah. and how do you reconcile that with your your faith and your religion and yeah. the book that basically says i i want to help everyone and help all people just because these people weren't lucky enough to be born in the united states yeah, or yeah, yeah. but lucky enough to be born because that's the deal the whole thing is fucking luck i mean there are children dying yeah. overseas there are children dying in syria are you telling me that they are evil or wrong or they don't deserve to be helped because they weren't born in the united states it, it just opens up this ridiculous interpretation of of everything in the book there's a, a, a really uh, famous journalist, or maybe he's not really famous because you might not have heard of him, <laughs> is, uh, Christopher Hitchens. Was, yeah, of course I know yeah. that. I think we've talked about him on here, yeah. you and me, before. I mean, that guy would just blind you with logic, and at some point you just got to go, well, I, 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 I just believe what I believe, which is basically saying, hey, I'm done thinking. I'm I done arguing. I can't, I, I, can't, I can't handle this. I can't defend my position. Yeah. But, but, but again, but that yeah. gets into the slippery slope of faith. He pointed out that your your religion is not, or maybe it was Dawkins. Somebody was pointing it out that... Daryl Dawkins? Yeah, Daryl Dawkins. Big Chocolate atheist, Thunder? Big atheist. <laughs> <laughs> you, are you talking about Chocolate Thunder flying, Robinzine crying, teeth shaking, glass breaking, rump roasting, bun toasting, wham bam, glass breaker, I am jam, Daryl Dawkins? God hating. Left-handed spine chiller supreme, Daryl Dawkins? <laughs> yeah. People need to start naming their dunks again. People need to name their dunks. No, they don't, because every dunk is the same. Fuck that. Don't Name get me dunk. started on the dunks. The left-handed spine chiller supreme. That's fucking yes, genius. It's great if that's a real dunk. It's because it was a real dunk. <laughs> it was, yeah. named it dunk. Religion, politics, and dunking. Don't even talk to me about it. <laughs> that's I don't want to hear about it. It's a good list. All right. I don't, I don't blame you. You know what dunking is now? What's that? Bounce the ball as high as you can and run up, jump, catch it, and slam it through. You know why everybody does it? Because it's easier. You got to jump over your mom, too. Yeah, yeah, because you've taken the you've taken the coordination of managing your dribble and coordinating your body to bring the ball up at the right time. All you're doing is using the ultimate freedom of jumping with nothing in your hands. You jump as high as you can, then you catch this ball and throw it through. That's not dunking. Jordan dribbled. All right, Grandpa. Jordan dribbled. <laughs>
Your thing, Gramps. Greedo shot first and Jordan dribbled. All right. Even Neek dribbled. Dominique dribbled. Of course he did. In dunk contest, yes. you got to dribble. Larry Nance dribbled. Approach the basket, dribble, cuff that thing, rock it, throw it through. Don't just throw it up in the air and catch it and throw it down. That's a volleyball trick. Posers. <laughs> <laughs> this is a new me, man. I like it. You're coming out. Coming out of your fucking shell, goddammit. After this past couple days, man, screw your feelings. Fuck abortion and fuck dunks. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Take that. Motherfuckers. Another thing. What's this Tom and Jerry shit with their friends? Yeah, nobody cares about that. <laughs> Fucking, it's cat and mouse, man. They're supposed to hate one another. They Fuck can't this. bounce around to piano music and be pals. Don't like it. I like it. There's a lot of shit to fucking worry about. Yeah. Look at you. So, uh, getting back to what happened to me on, on Facebook, is I asked a question, and then sure enough... Well, there were people you said engaged you the way you want to be great. engaged. And, and there, I have friends that don't agree with me, but they like to talk about it. They're cool talking about it. And I, like, I like talking to them about it. But sure enough, I got some goofy-ass friends that yes. are hysterical. And they, they're like me. They like putting up goofy memes and funny like things about religion. I love that shit. It makes me laugh. Yeah. But as soon but as you, they but you recognize it doesn't make everybody laugh. You recognize that anybody who has yes. faith, quote unquote, but finds that shit offensive. If I was a person of faith and was on this thread and I was typing something or I was about to interact and I saw where it was going, I would just back away from the keyboard, hit my scroll bar, and move on to something else because this is obviously not for me. But they've been taught as good soldiers they are to tell you about Jesus and fix you. And therein lies where everything got weird. Somebody, <laughs> somebody was offended at a meme. And then pretty soon they started saying, you know, how blasphemous memes are, these memes are. And then I was saying, you know, I made the point that, you know, we throw that word blasphemy around. It doesn't really mean anything. I don't understand the concept of it. You can say you're offended by something, but what does that mean? Who cares? It, you, that's your problem. It's not my problem. Yes. If you're offended by something. I wouldn't say it that that harshly. No, but you feel it. You yeah. know, I, and trust but me, as a guy going, who's, yeah. who's done this for yeah. nine years, ten years now, I, I feel the same way. Like we've it's always like, said, I'm going to say something eventually yeah. that's going to make you go, oh, fuck. Like this whole show. <laughs> the abortion and the, the baby vacuum, all that stuff. It's a perfect example. I don't know of why a, people shut the show off. I think I. Why do you keep insisting people <laughs> shut the fucking show off and don't listen? Don't. Fuck you, man. <laughs> See, I found your religion. Yeah, by me. Make, by making a joke about the show. That ain't a fucking joke. You fucking think that? No, I don't. I know I'm teasing. Go oh, ahead, you dude. Because you were. Yeah. Well, because I. Because well, generally, I don't know. You're, this is like the ninth time you've referenced people turning off the show and hating it. And it's like, dude, enough. Okay, I I found your religion. Yes, you have me. All right. I go you're your own religion. Exactly. The Church of Mike. All right. Uh, and I if am... you ain't worshiping, you're walking. That's the way it fucking works. <laughs> hey, your what click would... wheel's right there. What would be your uh, your symbol, like, would replace your the uh, crucifix? Instead of a cross? Yeah, like, you wouldn't have a cross. The Church of Mike would have something else in it, wouldn't it? It's got just like a... A microphone? Just a giant mouth. <laughs> <laughs> right, like the Stones logo. Well, we did me as a, you painted me with yeah, the crucifix bitch. on the mic stand. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, but I, I guess yeah, just a big fucking like a mouth, just hang. Uh, yeah. Or or if I was dude, um, because you, you got to have a a, a fucking what the uh, say, I want to say Messiah Savior. Uh, Maybe you not just... what's that not sacrifice? What the fuck is the word for what? You got to have a martyr, a martyr. So dude, have a little Schmitty uh -huh. hanging from a noose on a uvula. Just an open mouth, and in the back of it, he's hanging. Because again, instead it's of a cross door, door or a two door uvula. Uh, oh no, you got to go sleek. Got to go two door. Is that, is that if you thing? just had like an open mouth, and in the back, hanging from the uvula, is just a little schmitty hanging on a noose. That's he's the fucking yeah, exactly, dude. Because that's there's your little martyr. Instead of like a cross and getting yeah. nailed in, he got to hang from a uvula. Well, could you? Wasn't it Bill Hicks that said that, that about the how offensive that would be to Christ to come back and just see? Yeah, yeah. It's like going up the Jackie yeah, with a Jackie rifle. With a rifle. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe. Yeah, that could be a cool... But just think back then, if they didn't crucify people and Jesus had died by hanging or whatever ways they had of putting people to death. What if Jesus got killed like the guys in Seven? Oh. Like they made Jesus eat a bunch of spaghetti till they exploded. <laughs> what would then? That would really mess up your jewelry yeah, and it's, and it's, and it's, it's Like what do you wear on a pendant? Well, also because you don't have a good... That would I would think that would really... That would bury Catholicism because then you don't have a good looking martyr because that's the key too to this Jesus thing. Is the abs? Yeah, yeah. He's like all good yeah. looking and he's all fucking sleek. He's like Brad Pitt. Yeah, he's got his fucking... He's, NHL, he's got an NHL playoff beard. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just he's... 
And and also, by the way, he's always white for some weird reason, even though he was born in fucking Mesopotamia or whatever the fuck. <laughs> That's what kills me when people see his face and toast. It's always the George Harrison, yeah, Kenny it's, Loggins it's... <laughs> Jesus that they see in the toast or the yeah. bread yeah, or, it's, or the tortilla. Yeah, it's fucking Jason Lee from Almost Famous. That's who it is. <laughs> He's just the, that's that's their Jesus, man. Instead of the fucking like, wasn't he? I, I I've read that he was black and short or whatever the fuck. Like, there's all sorts of nonsense, right? Well, he really looked like Lester from Willie Tyler and Lester. That's what Jesus looked like. <laughs> Jesus did not look like Jason Lee and Almost Famous. He looked like Willie Tyler and Lester, the fucking Lester, the dummy on the fucking on the on the knee. I think he. he but that's the key is their murder is good looking. That's the deal. They, yeah, he has blue the, he, eyes. He then, took it and they put yeah. him on the thing and he's got the cross and he's got abs and he's got perfect hair and perfect yeah. beard. How do you, how do you, dude, I live now. I don't have a perfect beard. How the fuck did Jesus keep that shit trimmed? No you, way. Yeah. You would beard. have been scraggly as fuck. You would never would have made the apostle cut, cut list just based on your weird beard. <laughs> they, never, they would. Yeah. They said, nah, bad beard. Judas had a beard, right? Uh, depends on your version. I always picture Judas as Carl Anderson. From this movie, Jesus Christ Superstar. I always pictured him as Ricky Henderson. That as Judas? Weird. Yes. He was just constantly running away, man. Shit. He was fucking stealing shit and being dominant. Um, no, the Judas. He would have got away. Yeah, he would have got away. Of course he would have. The Judas that I remember is fucking, uh, my mom had a tapestry. Like everybody else had a fucking tapestry of The Last Supper. Okay. And, uh, and it's that deal again where, and you, you might speak to this as an artist, uh, Judas is darker in the picture than everybody else. And that's, well, yeah, that's a, he's evil. That's a commentary on him yeah. and what he's going to wind up doing. And he's also whispering in Jesus's ear in this tapestry. Hey, guess what? I don't like fish. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he said. He's like at the last <laughs> supper. And Jesus is like, ah, I'm going to totally turn all this fish into free and feed all you guys. He's like, I forgot my wallet. Jesus. I, uh, I, I, I can't have gluten. So with this <laughs> bread, when you start making this bread, can you possibly, I mean, I don't mean to be this guy, but make a tortilla or something or some sort of gluten-free. I don't know how it works. I don't know how to love him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jesus! All right. Um, um, they're doing that. My mind is clearer now. Dude, I saw that shit live. I saw it with Jack Black Who as King Herod. Oh, uh, ben Vereen. Ben Christ. Vereen was in it, dude. Fucking Who played up. Judas? Um, a guy from like, Glover, wasn't it? Was it Glover from Purple? Uh, uh, not, uh, Crispin Glover? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. No, Roger Glover from ever. Purple from Deep Purple. Danny Glover? Could have been oh. Danny Glover. Go to his Glover Teixeira, MMA fighter. Oh my God, that'd be awful. Who am I thinking of? The singer from, uh, Corey Glover. Corey Glover. From Living Color. I don't yes. think it was. No. Oh, okay. Um, cause that's a hard part to sing. Cause Judas's what's his part? The, the, the guy, Jesus was the Jesus, the, the guy from the movie. <laughs> Ted Neely? Yeah. Ed Neely? Or Ted, Ted... Ted Neely. It was Ted Neely. Ed Neely then... was with the Three Stooges. Jack, this is awesome. Jack Black was King Herod. You are the Christ. He was the great so, Dude, it was Christ. fucking amazing. Because this is like high, this is yeah. a high point for his I like have the t-shirt. You got me the t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, when I went and saw it, dude, I, I, want, I thought for sure they'd release an album because they were raising money for a theater yeah. in Los Angeles. And I'm like, if you record this and then release it, that, you know, I, I would buy it. I'm like, all right, well, I'll get this eventually because it was so fucking yeah. great. I, the guy... The the who's the deep voice dude in the movie? Caiaphas, dude, their Caiaphas was ridiculous. Like fucking He's dangerous, yeah. rumbling fucking earthquake yeah. nonsense. I mean, just the deepest voice I've ever heard. Uh, and so uh, they never released it. You and know so, why? Why is that? Because somebody listened to it and went, ah, it's not so good. <laughs> I, you know what? That's a good point. Possibly. Maybe Jesus himself came down off the cross. He went, yeah. Mm, Ted, Ted Neely's voice is a little shot, fellas. Um, but well, here, yeah, and, you can't Yvonne Jesus Elliman forever. was there and all that stuff. So Did she do, she was there. Yeah. Oh, um, so it was this big deal, but uh, the reason I bring it up is cause like two weeks ago I was just, I was four in the morning. I was yeah. at my desk and I was like, you know what? And I Googled it and it, it's on part of it is on YouTube. Uh -huh. Jack Black's King Herod is on YouTube. Somebody like recorded it with their phone. Okay. So it was like a bootleg album. It's not like a, yeah. And it's just the yeah, audio. Yeah. It's, it's not video or anything, yeah. but it's worth it. Cause when he walks in, he goes, they say that, you know, I, I yeah. don't even know the words of it, but when he walks out and the place goes fucking bananas. Oh, you are the Christ, the great Jesus Christ. And he did this thing where he, um, you know, turned my water into it's wine or whatever, yeah. and he, he threw bread and he bounced it off his fucking head while he, cause he's on his knees. <laughs> Dude, it was the cool, it was the coolest move where I went, you know, he did that. That was his deal. Cause while he, he walked singing? over with the, yeah, with the bread. Yeah, he's like, you know, life. Blah, 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 that all happened. Bing, bing. And he, what that whole fucking scene. All the whole last days of Christ was all done to music. People don't know that. Oh, really? That's totally yeah, true? That's true. Did they have a school bus, too? Wasn't there a yeah. school bus in that movie? And a lot of the Romans did carry submachine guns. <laughs> that's true. 
<laughs> well, well, I got to be honest with you. If you've got a submachine gun, crucifixion seems to be going the extra mile. <laughs> yeah, I know. Point. And the forty lashes or the whatever lashes with the the whip, you you, it's, you got a gun. Dude. No, you could just you could turn the messiah into Swiss cheese at that point with your fucking <laughs> your your gat. You are the Caesar. Why don't you shoot him? (laughs) So you put up this thing, and then people were upset, and then other people were not upset. Well, nobody was upset until somebody took offense to the memes, which I get, man. But the thing is, you know, I'm not going to censor my friends. I have friends that think evil shit like that's hysterical, and I do too. But I also have friends who don't. And and my opinion is like, if you don't, don't look at it. Just, it's not for you. uh, This conversation is not for you. But, but I will ask you this, because it, this is, you know, we've talked about religion has been like this a very long time. And now yeah. that sort of a- attitude has creeped into politics. And cre- it's, it's, I look at it almost as, like, I've, I've called it the sportsification of everything. Sure. Uh, my team, your team. Yeah. You, and if, you're, and if you you're don't like a... my team, you suck. Yeah. That's the thing. It used to be, hey, I got my team. You got your team. Well, let's we'll see what happens. Yay. You know, let's have a fun game. Now it's you suck for not supporting my team and fuck yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And everybody's like that. And it's because everybody got a voice via social media. So everyone gets to come in. And I, I mean, just this happened. And again, I, I, I've talked about the evils and perils of social media on this fucking show. There's a fighter in the UFC named Demetrius Johnson. That guy's a dick. He is the number one pound for pound fu- fighter in the world. He has cleaned out the flyweight division. He has no challengers. He has no peers. He's a fucking monster. His number one challenger, he just dismantled on a Fox show. And he just abused the shit out of him. But the problem is nobody buys tickets to see Demetrius Johnson because he weighs 125 pounds. And uh, it's it's watching little tiny guys slap the shit yeah. out of each other. You can go to a fucking recess and watch that happen. <laughs> go not, to a Mexican not with, bar at night. Yeah, not with the panache of Demetrius yeah. Johnson, but still. <laughs> the panache of Demetrius yeah, he slaps the shit out of people really, really well. But uh, so the thing is, he he's the champ. He's just he's cleaned out his division. So there's another fight where a guy named Cody Garbrandt, who is essentially a uh, a tattoo shop given life. <laughs> he, he that's all he is. He's the walls of a tattoo parlor, but he's got lungs, and he's just a dick bag. Is he a fantastic fighter? Yes. Did he have a fantastic performance to win the belt? Yes. But he's also the guy. He is just a steakhead. I mean, you fucking hate him. <laughs> Just a total, hey, bro, what's up, bro? Day hanging with the bros, bro. Like that fucking dude. Uh-huh. Well, he's on this year's Ultimate Fighter where he's coaching against TJ Dillashaw. And, and they TJ Dillashaw left his gym and then they're having a big fight about who, who was mean to who. It's a giant fucking slap fight. But the bottom line is TJ Dillashaw is going to fight Cody Garbrandt for his belt. It's going to be a fucking amazing thing. And they're promoting it on Ultimate Fighter. But now Cody Garbrandt, his back hurts. So he's... Been, he literally had to go to Germany for a stem cell procedure, which is, that's no good. That's no bueno for your fight career, all right? If you've got to go see <laughs> the Germans and have them plunge needles into you, I mean, that's some Dr. Mengele yeah. bullshit, and good luck getting back into the octagon. <laughs> so I hope he makes it, and that would be great. But in the meantime, TJ Dillashaw has no fight. And now mm-hmm. he's, a, he's a 135 fighter, and Cody's the 135 champ. Uh, so... Everybody said, well, you know, Dana White said, well, you know what? I'm working on a fight now where now TJ can fight Demetrius Johnson for the flyweight title. So TJ can cut 10 more pounds and go fight Demetrius Johnson. And Demetrius Johnson said uh, on Twitter when he saw that, he said, look, he goes, uh, I am I have no plans to fight TJ Dillashaw. I'm still waiting for a contract to fight Ray Borg, the number one contender in mm-hmm. the flyweight division. If TJ wants to fight me, he can come down to my division and win a fight at this weight class to prove that he belongs here. All right. Makes sense to me because again, DJ number one pound for pound oh, fighter in the world. Unbelievable! <laughs> Everybody on fucking social media turned on him, and and again they give you because the weird thing about the UFC is it's called mixed martial arts. All right, yeah. So you get those weird fucking kung fu grasshopper snatch the pebble from my hand gi wearing motherfuckers a guy wears a gi to trader joe's those assholes and he's like oh i thought of it last night with my sensei demetrius and i thought if you were to challenge yourself with tj you would be accepted as one of the greatest martial artists of all time you should not care about money this should be for you and it's like dude it's called prize fighting you fight for a fucking prize but they all come at him a he's a chicken because he won't fight tj b he's a he's a mercenary because he just wants money and all of these assholes have attacked him and he's also one of the coolest guys he has a twitch yeah. stream he plays video games he's accessible to fans he's the greatest he should be honestly the face of the ufc but instead they've gone the other way with connor and those dudes who all just want to fucking make fun of guys and rip them and, and cut them to pieces and look i like that part of it too because i like my wwe in my ufc but when there's a guy who's a fucking a, a, a champion without peer a guy you can't fucking touch 
that's the find guy, a way to touch him. But that's what yeah, they're doing. They'll they're fucking carving him up. Because yeah, look, and I remember I hated Sugar Ray Leonard when I was a kid. Really? Well, because I liked Tommy Hearns. I wanted Tommy Hearns to beat him. And so I and I and I, then I just wound up rooting against him because he was the Yankees. He yeah, was the yeah, Yankees yeah, of boxing. Yeah. He was the Dallas like Cowboys Jordan, of boxing. If you didn't yeah. live in Chicago. Which is totally true because it's funny. Yeah. I, I live in California now. Yeah, so and I talk to people that are Patriots fans, but I always have the discussion because they're like, Yeah, and they feel this weird. You know, everybody hates us and fuck, we don't give a fuck, blah, blah, blah. And I go, look, man, I grew up with the Jordan Bulls. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. And now, for in a in a smaller way, I, I have the Blackhawks because they won three cups in yeah, five years and years. fucking everybody hates them. They're just like, oh, my God, they're in the Winter Classic again. Oh, fuck, I can't have the Blackhawks shoved down my throat. And uh, and I just go, yeah, I, well, I mean, then beat them. And yeah. people have, you know, but it's that thing where you can't, where people get so upset and angry about that sort of thing. And it drives, so Demetrius Johnson is being fucking attacked on social media. And all it all he did was say, because again, they also don't recognize he would fight TJ Dillashaw, but give him $2 million because he fucking deserves it. You're yeah. paying Connor, you're paying the Diaz brothers, which makes sense because the right now, Diaz brothers, dude, Casper Gomez, uh, fuck the fucking Diaz brothers. Fuck them all. I bet um, cockroaches. You hey, know what this, a is, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> this brings me to a bigger question for you. Yes. Why would anybody in their right mind want to become famous in this climate today? I agree I mean, with you. That's your, I mean, obviously, this is the goal that you've had since you were a kid, you know, whatever, uh, in terms of whether a kid or an, an older, uh, you know, teenager, whatever. Sure. You know, I look at fame and I go, why would anybody want that? Now, there's people that just, through no fault of their own, or it just happened by hap- you know, happenstance, they became famous. Yeah. Like, uh, I can't think of anybody offhand, but somebody gets discovered doing something and they, they had no intention of becoming famous and they just did w- whatever. Or, or it could be something as simple as being fucking Jessica McClure trapped in a well. Yeah. And, and look at that. So, Sully, the guy lands name. a plane on the yeah, thing. And they make a movie about him. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's your, it's accidental fame, but I don't understand why anybody, I, I mean, I get if you have talent, what's the point of talent if you don't share it, but I don't. I, I agree with you. Famous, oh. and here's the thing: I'm I'm not famous by any stretch of the imagination. The way you're I always, al- you're, you're almost famous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a public figure. That's the way I always look at it. I'm a performer who's in in. You're also a public figure skater, which is awesome. Well, there's but not a but but I am also a poor public figure skater. Yes, and a and a poor public poor figure skater. You can't afford the skates. No, and so when I a, yeah, you're just a poor guy on the ice. But when I purchase them, I'm also terrible at it. So, I, I guess we can say I'm like a Swiss Army poor. So I'm multifaceted in my in my poor. But uh, but so I don't I don't consider myself like I said I'm not famous at all. I am I am a public figure in that I am a niche performer who is known by a certain amount of people. Yeah. So, but at the same time, I I so I the blowback I get just as me. I know. I I can't. I'm, I don't understand. And again, you have to tune it out. You would have to be a guy who fucking turns your whole world off. Like, I don't understand why famous people are on Twitter. Like, I, I know they want to engage with their fans. Let's it's, put it this it's way. It's cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but the thing is, you can't ever read your ads. Like, you can't ever read the people who write to you and tell you you're... There's a woman named Christy, Chrissy Teigen. Do you know who Chrissy Teigen is? Yeah, she got that little head. She's a supermodel. She's like a sh- shrunken head lady. Married to John Legend. All right. And uh, and she's funny. She's she's interesting. She's funny. Yeah, and, she, and, and it's just she's part of a super couple, and she's rich. Like I said, she's a supermodel. John Legend is a fucking unbelievably talented singer. And so she'll post stuff where they're at dinner, they're doing these silly things. And uh, and she's got it compounded by the fact that she's a woman. But people come on there all the time. They're like, you're trash, you're this, you're that. And I'll, I'll because I'll look and yeah. read it. And then, and then I, I have to back out because I don't fucking want it. It's funny, you would ask, why do people want to be famous? This week I was, I was with Shannon this week. And, uh, and she's I got a, her own show now, right? Of course she does. Yeah. She's fantastic. I had a, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> you're going to be on it. Mind of a moron. It's called, <laughs> um, but she, she asked me and, and in the terms of, you know, what I want to do, what would happiness be? And because we were talking about that, cause I'm trying to be centered a little more and find happiness in things, you know, cause you, you, you can't make life drudgery. You have to go ahead and go, well, I got to do this and got to do that because I've been, I've been proud of myself recently for some things and some adjust, like I said, losing weight and changing my diet and all those things, whatever you make these small little baby steps, which is weird at 50, but you still make them. You have to keep improving yourself as you get older. So she said to me, what would you want? Would you, do you want to be famous? Do you want, how would you want the show to be? And I said, well, I said, I honestly, I'd, I'd love to be doing the show every week and then also doing stand up on the weekend. I'd love to go places and do shows for people live. Mm-hmm. And she said, well, that's great. And then I said, but I, she goes, would that make you happy? And I said, I think so. I said, you know, honestly, she goes, what would the ultimate happiness be for you? I go, you know what it would be? Doing nothing. 
I, I know that sounds ridiculous, but what I would want to do more than anything is I would want to have the freedom to do whatever I wanted whenever I wanted to do it. And yeah. and I would never bother anybody again. I would just, I would fucking, but yeah, I would you, travel. you kind of already do that. To a certain extent, but not, I can't wake up in the morning and go, you know what, man, I'm going to go to fucking Dallas and just, and just fly. I mean, I, you still need money. Yeah. I mean, honestly, they always say money doesn't bring happiness because you're still you and you're still fucking bananas. Yeah. Well, I'd love to give it a fucking shot. You know what I mean? That's You'd like to be bananas in Dallas. Of course. I mean, I want to get up and if I want to go to the UFC in Vegas, then I want to be able to go do it. Or I want to fly to Ireland or I want to go to Japan or if I want to go you know, to fucking uh, anywhere to come out here and see you and just hang out for a couple of days. And, oh, I don't want that. Well, all right. Well, I'll knock on your door until you answer. Okay. But, uh, but I... Because I've often thought about it, like, what if that happened and it paid off? Do you still do the show? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, of course you still do the show. But then part of me is like, well, then, but then what are you doing? Are you just telling people all the cool shit you did? And who are you at that point? You're then you're just a fucking dick bag tour guide, you know? I, I honestly, I, I want to just, and I, I don't know if it's because I'm in the back nine of my fucking life or the fucking wrong side of a fifty or whatever you want to call it, but I, I, I just, I don't have any ambition to own a fucking Mercedes bus. I don't want a $5 million mansion. I don't need to be the star of a movie. I just, I just want the freedom to be me and make as much money as I can to do the things that I want. And the things that I want are not crazy. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. I don't want to buy $8 million worth of fucking stocks or whatever the fuck. I just, I want to be, like I said, I want to get up in the morning and if I want to go, you know what? I want to go to New York tomorrow and go to New York and have breakfast and hang out and sightsee and and meet friends and talk to people, maybe do a show while I'm there and then come home. That sort of thing. It's just, well, I guess it's not a a question. I guess my question isn't about fame in general. I, I, the specifics of dealing with people is what I meant. Like, why would anybody be want to be famous when it ta- it you know? It, well, there's all people do is knock you down of when course. you're there. I mean, think back uh, earlier generations, our parents' generation. You know, movie stars. You know, Frank Sinatra, Ava Gardner, and all those people back then. You now there wasn't. There was a. There was like this code where. You do your movies and we'll, we'll, we'll be fans of you, but that's where it ends. Yes. But because now they have access. That's if people that... could get hold of Sinatra in the forties, yeah. they and would they have brought, told him know, he was he, a dick. He I'm... did. He did take, he did take a lot of heat for leaving his wife and running off with Ava Gardner. But not like but he would not... have taken now. I know. And that's the thing. I do. It's just like politics. You know, nobody cared if JF at the time of JFK was uh banging who the the press kind of just said, well, that's none of our business. Well, the press did, but the salacious press would print it, and there was always people who had an interest. Yeah. I mean, you know, we grew up with the Inquirer and laughing at it. We yeah. grew up with the with the Star and I World Weekly News. I mean, I just I only learned what a little bit of criticism in a in a public forum can do to your personal feelings, and like like this thing I was talking about earlier about this post that went off the rails. I mean, that's just a tiny little yes slice of what somebody famous would deal with if they misspoke or. If they were human and and said the wrong thing on accident, or well, again, the problem is the access. You know, you yeah. you and all, and then look, I'm going to call bullshit on you for just a second. You you may have been looking to engage in a discussion, but you knew that was going to rub people the wrong way. I I, I know oh, you gosh. and I know who you are. No. I'm not saying you were trolling, but at the same time, you have to recognize, especially in these times, because you're a smart guy and you've been involved in this show enough, and we've talked about stuff before where people lose their minds on social media. That you knew posting right. that was going to be a trigger for some people. Yes, but I, I, maybe I did, but it wasn't with the intent of I'm going to start messing with people. It was the intent of I want you to see that it's okay to talk about it because I really think you, you should be able to talk about it. But it's pointless. But anybody, I, I, you, yeah. you were hoping to foster an intelligent conversation yes, about I a really topic that means was. something to you. But, I also, but you also recognize that people yeah. were going to be offended and think you were trolling. But I also recognize the fact that I say a lot of mean shit. Yeah. And I, I do a, a lot of sarc. I mean, I can't help that. That's just the way that I am. Sarcastic and visual, and that's just the way I am. So I understood that at first people would go, oh, man, you're just starting to, starting to fight. But I would have thought, again, here's why I made a mistake, that once the first few threads came in by people whose opinions I actually respect, and even if they don't agree with me, they would see that, I'm, he, wait, he's not, he's not attacking them. Yeah. He's serious. But all also, right. but the same t- I think all right. And then they would. And I would say, cool. But you also know there's an element of fuck you in saying that's just the way I am. Because I do, I do the same thing. Because I always go, this this show is what I do, and if you don't like it, that's fine, and you can turn it off or whatever. But like you, because you just said that's I'm sarcastic and mean, and that's the way I am. Well, you know, there's an element of fuck you in that. Oh, I don't know. There is. Be, well, I'll, I'll, let me clear it up for you. There absolutely is. You can pretend yeah. not to know it, but there is. 
I, I maybe there is. I don't know. You're I, being I, true to yourself as a guy, but but you know I'm you taking, have to understand. I'm doing something that I think is not bad, but I recognize that somebody might think it's bad, and I say I don't care about that. If that's fuck you, then I guess you're right. That's a nice way of saying fuck yeah, you. Okay, I don't then, care yes. about how you feel. Is I, a nice way of saying. Fuck I you. I think this point is worth hurting your little feelings. And the thing is, but but you go in with the hope of them understanding you're not trying to hurt their feelings. I and see. I will go out of my way to say, hey, you know, I'm not making, I'm not going to make fun of you. I make fun of a lot of shit. Yeah, but also, you know, you you sometimes you come off like you're you're Morpheus, and the rest of the fucking world is Neo. So like you're the one with the answers. You got the pills, and then you're like, you know, uh, and and also you're very Vincent too, or Jules, I should say. Hey, if my questions uh, frighten you, then I, you know, if my answers frighten you, then cease to asking questions, Vincent. You when you start doing that Gandhi bullshit, that also inflames people i mean they just kind of go wouldn't no no you're not listening to what i'm saying and you're like no i am listening but what you're not hearing is that i don't understand why you feel that you know it just it's i know what you're saying but yeah. but your approach can be enough to fucking piss people off sometimes obviously yeah <laughs> so so that i mean that's what happens it's just people they 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 get that yeah but and especially about something that, like we said as a religion or anything like that so you recognize that you what what you've done is enough to actually inflame people. No, I under uh, no, I, I really didn't. I, I underestimated the uncomfortable. I, I I underestimated it. I would. Why does anybody post anything on Facebook uh, besides here's a picture? Here's a picture of my cat. Of course, my kid went uh, you know to soccer camp, which is cool. Yeah, you know, I, that's fine. That's what most people do on Facebook. But because and here's another thing, you know, Facebook has all these private little groups you can join. And because I've said, you know what, I don't want to be known as the mean meme guy that's always posting mean shit about religion. I'll go to these groups where everybody kind of thinks the same, and maybe it's an atheist group or maybe it's an anti-religion group. And those people kill me; they crack me up. Some of the some of the memes on there are hysterical, and I like those people because they they joke and they have fun, and we all have the same sense of humor. And then I make the mistake of assuming that I can go back to civilian Facebook. And that's where I mess up because I forget. But the, but the problem is not with you. Um, yeah. It's the problem that everybody wants their echo chamber and nobody wants to be challenged or, or asked yeah, a question about how they feel. I so like you I'm said, naive about it. I probably am very naive. Well, about the problem it. is, but this is just, a, uh, I wouldn't say a recent phenomenon, but again, social media, you find those groups that are, are like thinking towards you. And you said you can blend in there, but then you try to bring some of that sensibility to your overall yeah. page. And unfortunately, We've reached the point where discourse is dead and people exactly. go, I hate you for posting that. What exactly. the fuck, man? And um, <clears throat> hold on. You got <clears throat> oh, Jesus. You know what? God struck me in. He just climbed my fucking throat right there. Uh, when you go ahead and you put out. Check uh, your uvula. <clears throat> could be. <clears throat> <clears throat> you know what? Hey, I'll look in my mouth. Is there a kid hanging from my uvula? I see red. Uh, uh, Little Schmidt has a red shirt, right? That's a shirt, yeah. <clears throat> Jesus. Um. Jesus Lord, help me. <laughs> but that's that's the problem that we've run into now. Nobody has discourse. No, you're, you're right. Everybody yeah. lives in their echo chamber. So when you come along in their echo chamber and you go, hey, by the way, I don't agree with any of this, then you're a, a, a jerk who's trying to cause trouble instead of somebody with a differing opinion. But what if I didn't say, hey, I don't agree with any of this? What if I said, I see your point and I, I don't agree with it necessarily, but I, I understand what you're saying. You're looking for nuance in a world that has none. There is no more. Nobody I said on Facebook. I brought. A, I bought. A, I brought a brain to a crucifix fight. Yeah. Fuck yeah. See, that's what I yeah. mean. It's. It's just you're looking for people to have nuance and sensitivity about something that's they. Yeah. They. There is you, either you are. You know. They. They go to a church and they're told. Yeah, I know. What to believe and how to feel, and they choose to have faith in that. I'm, look, I'm not. Also, I'm not broad brushing religion. I whatever the fuck. If you want to believe in it, that's great. Just, but again, don't bring a crucifix to a brain fight, I guess, is, you know, if you want to you flip it <laughs> yeah, on its ear. That's actually making more sense. And, and again, that, again, that's not implying that if you like God, <laughs> you I mean? don't have a we brain. We have to do this. Yeah, everything's got to have a disclaimer. There's yeah. no humor. There, there's no evil humor. What's wrong with evil humor? Evil humor is funny. Yes. and you, But you can try. Look, there are people, but here's the thing. There are people that are, who get it. And they, But this is, yeah. <laughs> I mean, every troll thinks he's doing evil humor. That's another problem. Every, yeah, they, I suppose you're right. When I talk about artless snark yeah. and things like that, everybody who thinks that, you know, there are people out there who think they can yell fag at a guy and, and they, they're being funny. Yeah. Ah, no, man, it's just comedy. You're like, no, 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 you're doing it poorly. Or, you know, people who want to go out there and say things about, you know, 
women or or you they're just the the rebellion against political correctness has caused such a fucking ridiculous explosion of people who don't know how to do it doing it i don't know fuck all that <laughs> look at you go look at you go you're the one who started all this bullshit <laughs> i didn't <clears throat> you did you put up a meme and you knew fucking people would go hey what up uh <laughs> like, hey people i want your opinion you dick what the fuck is your problem looking for an opinion and shit I, I, don't you know we, how you're we not feel. gonna trick me into giving you my opinion man i ain't falling <laughs> for this you dickhead uh so that's that's yeah i don't so I don't know I, yeah it people. got weird and i as, as hard as i tried to keep people on point they just kept wanting to f- tell me how i was being irrational and i was generalizing about a faith and i was like you can't say max quit generalizing about a faith and then turn around and go because we christians don't think that when we fi- what what you just generalized yourself mm-hmm. how, how come i can't talk about something but you can i don't understand that and it's, it's childlike it's naive it's probably stupid but the implication that it that it was that's what really bothered me about it is that the implication was that i was provoking people on purpose to a to a means to just destroy them and i I can't get, I just couldn't shake it. That's the first time I've ever been that aggravated at something on social media, which I find is a joke to me. Facebook is funny to me. I think it's funny. I love just saying silly stuff and trying to make people laugh. That's all I do. Maybe I'll show a picture of my dog. You know? I'm John, and this has been The Mean. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, (laughs) Top that, TSA guy. Take that, motherfucker. You want to swab up my mic? Uh, <laughs> John, I don't really think you're a motherfucker. Please don't think that I do. No. You're not, and he's not listening. And, and he bailed anybody long that ago. does have sex with mothers, if that's what you want to do, yes, please. That's okay. Just not mine. Hey. You know, because she's only because she's married. If my mom was single, I don't care. Everybody can just fucking rail her. Go <laughs> ahead, have fun. If she likes you, I mean, that's the thing. Don't run a train on my mom unless she invites you. I guess is my point. Um, and isn't that the point? point. Of, that's yeah. really. I, I found the fortune cookie once. <laughs> don't rail my mom. <laughs> don't run a train on my mom unless she gets permission. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can get me at Mike and Mike Schmidt comedy.com. That seems like the place to end the show. Certainly <laughs> you guys can be my friend at facebook.com slash the 40 year old boy. You can follow me at twitter.com slash the 40 year old boy. That's uh, me on there. And also Snapchat and Instagram, Mike four O Y O B Snapchat and Instagram. That's for all of you out there. You, uh, you Chris's and you batarangs and you lemons and, uh, and uh, you Lisa's and everybody else who writes me on Snapchat and uh, finds me on Instagram. Thank you, Mike 4 yob I'm out there. Go ahead and find me. Uh, our friend David Hernandez, as you've heard all show long, he's the guy who does all the music and the artwork for this show. You can go ahead and find him at facebook.com slash David Max Hernandez and be his pal, his pal, his friend, his friend, his internet chum, his internet chum. I'm going to repeat myself all show long. If you want him to draw stuff for you or paint stuff for you or do any artwork at all, Go to artbydmh.com, A-R-T-B-Y-D-M-H.com. Check out his uh, Valscapes and his Gaikons and all the cool stuff he's got there. Plus, he can do bass stuff for you, apparently. Um, if you want him to play a bass, you, you going to bass me out of here? What are you going to do? Play yeah. some, give me a riff? All right. Um, I, Jesus! My mind is clearer now. It is. Uh, so he's at artbydmh.com and go ahead and find him there. He's terrific. Uh, Ryan Dirks does all the web stuff. Go to facebook.com slash Ryan Dirks. Super fan Geo, not super fan of me, but super fan of others, certainly. Uh, he has told me, he's informed me that all of year nine will be up soon. It's all uploaded. Now it's just being uh, cleared by YouTube and getting put on there. So all of the 40 year old boys should be on the YouTube channel, but go to the Mike Schmidt YouTube channel, please listen to old shows. And then there may be some new stuff going up eventually. And uh, I'm here all week. So, uh, you know, we'll be putting up videos on Patreon and, and I'll get to that in a second, but yeah, go to the YouTube channel. Thank you. Super fan, not of me, but super fan of others, geo and check out his podcast called pod gods because he's our friend and does neat stuff. And he also puts all the love line stuff together. He's the best. Remember that Lily Von Stupp is our producer. She is not here this week, but she is uh, at the Hollywood Burlesque Festival this weekend. Remember, if you come to town for that and I'm there, we will go to dinner or hang out. Remember to let her know or let me know via email. Buy some tickets. Go to brownpapertickets.com and look for Hollywood Burlesque Festival. And the tickets are available for this weekend. It's going to be fantastic. Go check out Lily. Say hi to her. It's a fucking professional triumph, and I think you should be there to celebrate with her, God damn it! Why wouldn't you? You should. Uh, so that's Lily. That's Ryan. That's uh, our friend Superfan Geo and our friend Max. Uh, please remember, we have a sponsor. We have a couple of sponsors. The Paranoid Strain is a podcast that is our our friend, the Fearful Jesuit. I apologize. 
fearful Jesuit puts up. It's the podcast that explains why so many people believe ridiculous conspiracy theories, and the man even has that on his business cards and his stationery. I should know, because I got a fortune cookie from him, and it said right on there. <laughs> Something about your mom. The podcast that explains why so many people run around a train on your mom. and. <laughs> So, and that show comes out every two months, but go ahead and give it a listen and please review him in iTunes. That's very important. Go ahead and give him some feedback. Unless you're that fucking guy who wrote a paragraph about me, don't review anything ever again because you're a dick. But, and I, he's not really a dick. That's how you feel and that's fine. See, we got to put the disclaimer in there. Yeah. So please go we listen to Paranoid Strain. Is. It's the best. Uh, getthebutters.com. That's our guy, uh, our, our man, Jerome. Use the code 4OYOB to get her a butter, a balm, a, a bomb, or a lube, and put it all in your ass. Remember that? Everything is very important. It's a lot of anal play over there at getthebutters.com. So getthebutters.com and shove them in your ass. Get a balm, a bomb, a lube, all that neat stuff, and go ahead and throw it right in there. Please remember to go to getthebutters.com. Use the code 40YOB. Please go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com and use our Amazon link. That's great. Using that, we got all sorts of stuff on there, as I've mentioned. Uh, a lot of stuff there. The codes for, oh, not have any codes. We sell shirts. I'm trying to rush this because we have these discs in this antiquated system. So uh, please know that if you go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com, use the Amazon link. We get money, they get money, you get stuff. It works out perfectly. It's the best way to help out the show. Other than going to our Patreon page and becoming a patron, uh, like our friend Julie Phillips just did. Or no, Lisa Phillips. Or was it Lisa Julie Phillips? I don't want to say her name properly. Uh, because again, I'm trying to do this on the goddamn fly. You were going to say something? No, oh, I don't want to stop this train. <laughs> so go to uh, train. Uh, because, uh, I'd run it. So go to patreon.com and become a, a person. Thank you so much for everybody who joined this week. And I will, I will, uh, I apologize because I checked right before I came down to record. So I will note when I, when it comes time to thank you at the end of the month, I will say your name properly. Lisa, Julie, Julie, Phillips. Lisa. Uh, Phillips, Ms. Phillips. How about that? Ms. Phillips just donated. So, uh, and she's, I think it's Lisa because she also talked to me on Snapchat. She's the Lisa I mentioned earlier. Hey, why didn't I remember it now? Because I'm <laughs> fucking babbling and Mex keeps holding up three minutes, two minutes, one minute and tell me how much fucking time I have. Uh, if you want to be an Uber driver, please remember to use my code DJZW1YTTUE. If you want to be a Lyft driver, like our friend John, who's out there. And as soon as he completes uh, 50 rides, I get 200 bucks. Go ahead and use the code Mike720057. Uber DJZW1YTTUE and uh, Lyft Mike, M-I-K-E 720057. And I'll tell you this, why not? Because we're almost out of here. You know what I did this weekend? I went to fucking see you too. And uh, and it was fucking brilliant and it was beautiful and it was a great show. But at the same time, at some point, I looked over at my friend Mike Siegel and I go, you know what? This is a, this is kind of a bloodless performance. This seems almost joyless. And he's like, what do you mean? I go, I don't know. The crowd is just kind of settled in. It's weird because they were a machine. There's a new standard set for fucking 60 year old front men and it's fucking Bono. That dude sounds exactly the way he fucking sounded when he was 25 years old. He tore it up. They came out, dude. They walked out on stage. They opened and I'm on a spoiler alert. Um, they had a small stage in front of the big stage and Larry Mullen Jr. walked out, sat at the drums and just fucking Sunday, bloody Sunday they opened with and then went right into fucking New Year's Day and then right into Pride in the Name of, Pride in the name of Love and I, which is a three pack that fucking crushes you and then they played the whole Joshua Tree album which I knew they were going to do which was fantastic but when I said it was bloodless and joyless it was about eight songs in a Joshua Tree and finally went you know what I figured it out there's no spontaneity here because everybody knows what's coming next yeah, that's why there wasn't yeah. an excitement vibe in the crowd so once Joshua Tree finished and it was phenomenal every song fucking Bolt the Blue Sky and uh, Red Hill Mining Town fucking run to stand still all of it was fantastic so, so it crushed it was so good but when it ended then there was this new element that came in with people being excited and then they did fucking elevation which i never thought i'd like live but went fucking crazy and we're all singing and jumping and then they did bad which i, I told siegel when i went i go dude if they do bad and they do fucking a sort of homecoming i'm in that's it that's all i want to see i don't ever need to see them again well i got bad which was fucking phenomenal not a sort of homecoming which is probably my favorite u2 song but holy fuck dude it was so great uh but the show was fantastic and then afterwards i walked fucking three miles back to my car and just was a sweaty mess but it was awesome i walked 10 miles that fucking day dude i felt like a, i because I, I didn't do any cardio on saturday i'm like you know what i'm gonna get my cardio after fucking u2 and just fucking destroy it Dudes, I fucking forgot. You can get Lily at uh, twitter.com slash Lily Von Stupp, twitter.com slash Hollywood BQ Fest, twitter.com slash Boobdini, and twitter.com slash uh, some other thing. Fuck. <laughs> but please, also, if you want to you get her all those places, cookie. find her at facebook.com slash Lily Von Stupp. But I went on to write her a personal note and congratulate her on her professional triumph with the Hollywood Burlesque Festival and ask her why I talk so goddamn fast. You can get her at Lily, L I L I, at burlesque411.fucking.com.
say you want to hook people in, get them halfway through a recipe and cut your fucking show in half. That's it. Do an hour about stew in this bale and get on a plane. And then come back and revisit it two days later. Because that's the most important stew in the universe. <laughs> Were there noodles or rice involved? Stay tuned! Here, we are playing on a level that most will never see. 